ฮัลโหลฮัลโหลฮัลโหลสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับฮัลโหลสวัสดีครับฮัลโหลสวัสดีครับฮัลโหลสวัสดีครับเช็คเช็คเช็คเช็คเช็คเช็คเช็คโอเคเช็คเช็คหนึ่งสองสามสี่เช็คเช็คคอมเมนต์เบาเช็คหนึ่งสองสามเช็คสวัสดีครับเช็คหนึ่งสองสามเช็คเกณฑ์ในนี้ได้ยินแล้วล่ะสวัสดีครับเช็คเช็คเช็คเช็ควันที่เช็ควันที่เช็ควันที่
Hey, good morning and welcome to the WGP Water Jet World Series Round 3 right here in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. This is the final day of racing. Right now, John Bruno Pastorello is dominating this second moto of endurance. Tori Snyder just made another pass to get up in second and Kylie Elmer's in third. That is just a tease for all the great action we've got today. I'm going to throw this over to Nick so he can tell you even more. All right, thank you very much there, Don. Down on the shoreline. Welcome once again uh, for our final day. This is a championship day. That's right, we're going to get a chance to see who are the champions of the pro categories. So who you will you be rooting for? Don't forget to uh, follow us on Facebook and YouTube live. Well, All right, Don, well, welcome back. Hey, thank you so much. John Bruno <laughs> Pastorello continuing his winning ways as we come through the final couple of minutes of endurance. This was a 30 minute rodeo in this second round this morning. Although they had some clean water, Nick, the indomitable Pastorello team dominated once again. Kylie Elmer's fighting a flu was up in second for most of this race, just got passed by Tori Snyder. All right, so basically right now in the Pro-Am Endurance Open, my man is still, uh, my man from France, uh, Jean Bruno, is uh, still holding the lead again. You're telling me that he's going to be pulling off another perfect competition? I'm afraid so. Once again, that incredible team that has been working for so many years in the endurance racing. But you can't mark out Tori Snyder. This is going to be the long game. There's Kylie Elmers as she comes through in third. Kylie was so sick yesterday. She was actually back at uh, the IV tent trying to get some fluids in her. So she's been running a bit under the weather, but still looks solid out there. This is a multi-world champion we're watching. Originally from New Zealand, lives in Australia. Well, you know what? I'm going to have to disagree with you on living in Aust uh, Aust uh, New yeah. Zealand and Australia. I think, like I told you earlier, she spends more time in Thailand. She does. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's why. That's funny you mentioned that. She does a lot of mechanic work. She's one of the uh, highly respected mechanics globally. Uh, she does a ton of welding and mechanic work, and she helps a lot of the teams over in Thailand. So, yep, yes, I have a yes, suspicion yep, she should probably yep. just buy property over there to hang out. <laughs> you know what? She might have some property secretly she hidden she somewhere. She might, actually. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, especially, you know, mechanics and fabric, what do you call it? Fabricators are hard to find. Yes, they really are, and particularly good ones that know how to work on the, these boats. So it is impressive to be able to watch Kylie Elmers hold on to that third place spot, and that's going to lock her into a uh, podium position. John Bruno Pastorello took the win yesterday with 400 points. Aksa Aswar in second from Indonesia, and Kylie Elmers yesterday was third. Mikhail Legal was fourth, Fahid El Reyes was fifth. Right now, she just got to hold on for a few more minutes. Well, that's uh, number 22 U.S. is uh, Anthony Redetic, right now currently holding on to six overall standings with the points of 348. What a great guy. Anthony Redetic, who we got to talk about at the Waterjet Offshore Series here in Phuket, in the Phuket, first time yes. ever. And Anthony Redetic took the win at that race. I mean, and he, it was a great performance by Anthony at the time, I mean, uh, I mean, we did uh, after the competition. We had a chance to sit, you know, sit around the table and yeah. chat a little bit. He said, "I mean, he was grinning from you know ear to ear the whole night." You oh know I mean? yeah, as he had every right to do. You are watching uh, John Bruno Pastorello. This gentleman has an incredible pedigree: 15-time world champion, two-time European champion. And as the white flag comes out for him, I just want to share it. He has got a uh, five-time champion of France, three-time. 300 champion and uh, your winner last year for the World Series. Right on his way in on the right side. I mean, not the right side, but he's uh, rolling on the right side of the endurance field here. What an incredible ride for John Bruno Pastorello. And he is another one of the riders that he is very physical. And we talked a lot about relaxed riders and being able to manage your resources. This is a gentleman that knows how to go out and have fun. If you watch him before and after a race, that grin never changes, despite where he finishes. He's a very intense, passionate racer, but I've noticed that he carries a lot of fun out on the track. Well, you have to, I think you have to, Don, because, uh, I mean, if you don't have fun doing what you're doing, how can you succeed? 
right? Especially in a, like, like right now, just taking a chicken flag. You know, Bruno. Con congratulations, yep. John Bruno Pastorello. Uh, that pair of bookend wins is going to be just enough, as you know, to give him a world title. John Bruno Pastorello riding for France. That's right. Here we go. All right, next up, it's going to be the Pro Ski Women Grand Prix. As the rest of the riders trickle in for the Endurance Open category. All right, so Kylie Elmer's going to lock down um, that third place and maybe be able to move up into second, depending on where Oxa Aswar ended up. So congratulations to this young lady. She will be on the podium tonight. This is going to be our very first uh, moto for the Pro Ski Women Grand Prix. Our players here, let's see, we have a total of six players here. We have uh, Francis uh, Lua Deliat. We have U.S.'s River Varner. Estonia's yes, uh, Yasmin Yaprus. Sweden's Emma Nelly Orthodol. U.S. is Reese Geis and U.S. Anna Glennon in the competition or the category, the Pro Ski Women Grand Prix. If you are just joining us, real welcome to the WGP number one Waterjet World Series round number three right here in Lake Havasu, Arizona in the United States. And uh, round number one, Don, I forgot to say uh, to mention that, was we, uh, was held in Mehiliki, Poland. Yeah, that was a beautiful yep. round, but very cold. And uh, second was in Vichy, France. And, of course, we'll be finishing up the tour or the series in Pattaya City, Thailand in the second week of November, uh, December. Can't wait to get an opportunity to... Uh, see this final round after all of this incredible stuff and here's the race course so you guys can get a sense of what they're going to be dealing with this week now we've got a split section and that's how it's going to look on the start green buoys are going to indicate the inside split so if you hear us talking about it that's the green buoys blue buoys are outside they're going to merge into that checker flag area so where it gets crazy they have a triple chicane to deal with and then they have to do a very tight technical right side of this track. And then they're going to hit the back stretch, which is world famous, literally, in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Now, there's a different track, Nick, that we yeah, want to... Yeah, the runabout, right, Don? Yes, sir. The runabout track is going to open up a little bit more on the right side. This is going to allow the runabout riders to open up those throttles because those boats are wicked quick. And then, of course, they, too, will be taking the split section. And don't forget, Don, excuse me there, don't forget... Uh Talk about that uh, yeah, equalizer buoy out there. Buoy. Yeah, so the black buoy is a penalty buoy. We will be talking about that. If you miss a uh, buoy out on the track, you have an opportunity to pick it up on that penalty buoy. And, there, and that split section we talked about is where a lot of passing is going to happen. And then this little area. The danger zone. It's a really the uh, trick zone. This is an opportunity for the riders to pass. It's also one of the more technical areas of the track. Now, after the first lap. Oh, this, I like this one. Yeah, this is your favorite part, I know. <laughs> after the first lap on the ski divisions today, you're going to get an opportunity to watch them do the log jump. This is a nasty little triple log jump. It takes a lot of finesse to get through it, and a lot of boats got, uh, let's just say, cratered yesterday. Well, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of different uh, courses, only one log jump. That's right. Right. This is a triple one, so. Yeah, that's America. We like to yep. we like to go big. Yep, triple well, hamburgers. You know what? Merry Christmas to you. Triple log <laughs> jumps, exactly right. <laughs> All right. Back to the line with pro women. Uh, this is pro ski women Grand Prix. All right. If you're joining us live here, don't forget to check us. Uh, come on and check in with us here. Give us a like, share, comment. Ask any questions you want to ask. We'll do our best to answer them for you. All and right. that is should be number 23 there. That should be uh, River, River, right? River Varner, yeah. So River Varner is going to be lining up in my favorite position. It's called the Cinderella spot. She's going to be on the outside, outside. And, man, she looked so solid in Melhinki, Poland. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see her in Thailand, too. Now, I have a little trivia on this lady. Okay. River Varner, prior to last year, had never been out of the country. And then last year went to Dubai, Sharjah, oh. 
Okay. Uh, Vichy, France, <laughs> and also Poland, all oh, in one, one year, year, from one zero, zero to 90. <laughs> I'm getting that passport punch. Well, hey, that, that's it. She's getting a lot of stamps now. Yeah, she's getting a lot of stamps. So it's great to have River Varner uh, join us on the tour. What a great view of Lake Havasu City, Arizona. This place is rated as uh, one of the top 100 best bass fishing lakes in America. Oh, I like that. I thought you might. I like that. Uh, they're ideal for catching both large and smallmouth. And apparently, Crazy Horse Campground, which is where we're hanging out, and you can actually see the campground behind us. I mean, I heard there's a lot, also a lot of uh, fishing tournaments also oh, it's in huge. the area. Yeah. yeah, this place is really a sports mecca. Yeah. Uh, Lake Havasu's oldest RV park and campground is located on the island, just across from the London Bridge, and that's where our racing is going to be happening this week. All right, so you know exactly where our local location is, so let's don't forget to uh, just come on down and <laughs> hang out. Hang out, yeah. And let's tell you how hot it is if you're going to come out and hang out. Today <laughs> is going to be one of the hottest days we've had with uh, the lowest amount of breeze over the water. Uh, we're looking at well over 100 degrees overall, so the riders are definitely going to have to stay hydrated today. Well, you're not, not just them. We have to stay hydrated. Also, just uh, take care of yourselves today if you're out here. The sun is pretty br brutal. It is, yeah. It's going to be a cooker. Uh, before we get started with the Pro Ski Women Grand Prix, let's go ahead and thank our sponsors real quick here. Uh, IJSBA, we got the SBT uh, Sports uh, Short Black to uh, Block Technologies. Yeah. We Yam got Yamaha. Yamaha. Yep. We got Kawasaki Don. So, uh, we got Sea Dew as well. Yep. We got uh, Riva Racing. Wait, we got Belosian. What about the other one? The next one is Losus. Yeah, we got uh, Solus as well, which is awesome. Anderson Power Sports. And, and Commander Industries. Yeah, we got the Ride Now. And VP Fuels. That's, those are the guys that got this thing started, so uh, thank you very much. All right, let's talk about this lineup. It's Anna uh, Glennon. This is Anna Glennon. She's got the pole position on the inside split. Anna Glennon out of the United States and a fantastic rider. She's not going to be alone out there on that inside, however. It is a boat number eight. And that is, uh, I do believe, Lou Dartalot that is going to be uh, racing today. I don't He's have the France. number on that okay. eight boat. I'll double check for you. And then 98, of course, that's Eminelli Ortendahl, and she's going to be on the outside inside. And then on the pole position, and then Eminelli Ortendahl getting ready to go. God, that boat is gorgeous. Fast Power Sports boat is what she's riding this weekend. And then you can see River Varner on the outside, outside. The pole position is going to be Reese Geis on the 141. And then you could just barely see it, but 64 is Yasmin E. Prouse. And so uh, Lou Dartalot will be that uh, rider that's on the number eight boat on the inside. So we've got three and three as we get ready to go. And that young lady, Yasmin E. Prouse, on the 64 boat is going to definitely be one to watch. But she's in a packed field and a lot of talent here. Well, they're going to do uh, a total of three motos today. They're going to finish this one up the whole two motos in the morning, early morning, and one championship moto in the afternoon. Here they go to the whole shot here for the Pro Ski Women Grand Prix. Whole shot they go, Don. Oh, beautiful. All right, so on this inside is going to be a boat number 98. That's Emma Nelly Ortendahl. She's actually on some borrowed property this weekend. It's one of uh, Quentin Bosch's boats for Fast Power Sports. That's and that is River Varner River on the outside. outside. Let's see, we're going to meet up on the front stretch. All right, will, be, uh, will it be U.S. or Sweden here, Don? Coming I, out with the green flag. It is. Oh, that's Emma Nelly Ortendahl with a no, whole shot. not yet. Number uh, 23 yeah. coming strong on the outside. Yep, that's going to be River Varner uh, coming from that outside. But Eminelli Ortendahl lock it in as far as the whole shot. And then River Varner with second. And it looks like uh, Valen uh, Lou Dartalot. It's going to be Yasmin Eprouse in third. And then Lou Dartalot in fourth. And that's how it looks on the start. Just first lap, first half lap of Pro Ski Women GP. All right, working the right side there is your leader all the way on top there going towards the backstretch area. Of the course there, heading in towards the power bend area. Number 98, your, lead, and your current leader at the time right now from Sweden. Yep, Imanelli Ortendahl. She's a two-time Swedish champion, one-time Swedish Cup winner, eight-time world champion. 
a Nordic champion, a slalom champion. Really, I could just keep going. This girl's got a ridiculous number of titles. One of the most celebrated Swedish women uh, in the world. And this young lady is on course to be another legend in the sport. You're watching Boat 23. That is River Varner. River on the inside split. And River has quite a resume by herself. All right, passing the tower there just a few seconds ago was Emma. There's 64. That is for Estonia's Yasmin Yepros. Yep, Yasmin Yepros uh, riding for Estonia. And Yasmin Yepros, as I had mentioned, is a big contender in this. She's got a world championship, uh, rides for Team 64, and she names all of her boats. Did she tell you what's the name of this one? She did. <laughs> <laughs> The one she doesn't like riding is Loki, so I'm pretty sure it's not that one. But oh. she has multiples. I'm going to double check. And I'm see sure. I'm sure she's is. got one named Thor. Oh uh, no, actually she doesn't. What? Nope. She's you got a name Loki. one Loki, but then not not one named Thor. Not one named Thor. She lives in Parnu, Estonia. And there is again River Varner. Those are one and two right there up on the backside, coming into the option once again. Yeah, River Varner is a three-time national champion, a second in ski GP slalom in 2020. She has five brothers, and she's a little entrepreneur. She's got her own clothing, uh, clothing company. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, she's uh, right now, the uh, River is on the outside, uh, inside line once again. And Emma Nelly yeah. is on the outside line. There's number eight. Haven't seen uh, Lou Derriott. There it is. Also coming on the outside line of the course for the Pro Ski Women Grand Prix. Yeah, Lou Dartalot looking solid. She's back in the fourth place spot, but that's Reese Geis putting the pressure on Lou Dartalot. Reese is back in fifth, and she is trying to get around the young lady from France. Hey, Tim Hicks, great to have you uh, joining us on the live stream today. Last year in Havasu, the top five was Eminelli Ortendahl, Lucy Gadsby, Yasmin Prouse, and Reese Guy, and Jana Borgstrom. That's how it looked at the World Finals last year. 141 right there on your screen is in fifth right now. Reese Geis. Oh, lost a little uh, momentum. Well, fell back just a smidge. I'm not sure if that was just a horsepower checkup or. If she just popped one of the waves. Now, one of the things that is unique to Lake Havasu City, and you'll see it throughout the day, uh, probably will take up some of our camera space. There is a huge ferry that leaves the channel and then goes across to the other side of the river. And when it does, it creates a massive wake. wake. But the wake doesn't curl. So we call them Havanamis because it's like a sleeper wave oh, that goes through the back stretch. So it doesn't curl, so it just rips. It rips people, so you got to really watch for that ferry. Any of the riders that hang out at Lake Havasu know about it, but a lot of the international riders, we had to let them they, know. Well, they, they, you, you, you have to experience it. You, you can know about it, but if you experience it, then you can fix your, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what do the, you need to fix? If you don't know about it and you hit it, you, you don't just, want, or I, going yeah. airborne for sure. It's, it's a surprise. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure surprise. these guys... I don't, and I'm sure these these guys don't need the surprise when you're riding in a competition like that. Yeah, so uh, Valentin Dardalot, sis, right now holding off. Boat number 141, that's Valentin Dard, uh, excuse me, Lou Dardalot. That's his sister. Lou is in fourth place. All right, I have a, let me uh, get a confirmation. Oh, oh. Boat number 98, Eminelli Ortendahl, followed by River Varner and Asmine Eprouse. There's your top three. Wow, beautiful shot of Eminelli Ortendahl. Now watch this young lady as she comes in and takes a turn. She knows how to put on a clinic. She drops very, very low, but unlike a lot of the uh, riders that you've been watching this week, especially Eminelli Ortendahl and Yasmina. Yasmina's moved up into second. Uh, these both of these riders have an interesting combination of finesse and very much physical riding and when you watch them take these turns you'll see that combination of f uh, finesse and physicality you well, got an update well you know what we are just about halfway through the moto here motor number one Don I do have an update 98 of course uh, still holding strong at first uh -huh. then we have just a few seconds coming up in second it's number 64. Yep, yes. That is yeah, uh, Yasmin, right? Yeah, Yasmin right. and Eprouse. And uh, River Varner dropped the third. Wow. River and Varner then, dropped Yeah, we back. got number eight in fourth position from France. Is that uh, Lou? 
and Lou Dardalot, yep. and then rounding uh, off the one four one. Don is in fifth. That's, okay, uh, so U.S. Reese, is yes. Reese, yes. Oh, and Sophie Miller on the live stream asked, why aren't they doing the log jump? So typically in the women's division, it's been back and forth whether they ask the women to do the log jump or not. This year it's a no on the log jump. Probably a good idea with the triple. Well, uh, But Sophie, great question. Greg Wall, hello from Oregon. Oh, okay. Oh, listen to this. B. Chata on the live stream. Today is my birthday. I wish Orca will win. That's the best gift for me. Oh, well, you know what? You might have a really good gift then. <laughs> and you got a good bet because Orca's yeah. been uh, clean in house yep. lately. Yep, he's he, he's already won one. Hopefully, we'll get uh, Orca and Otto both up here for interviews today if we That's get a chance. Number sixty-four, your second percent uh, second position holder, Estonia Yasmin Yapros. And if you're joining us, you are watching the Pro Ski Women Grand Prix. Don't forget to get, uh, if you're watching us through our live feed, don't forget to uh, uh, like us and uh, subscribe, share, and give us a comment. Let us know who you're cheering for and uh, where you chicken in from. Uh, Estelle Pere, who unfortunately couldn't be out here this year, she said the log jump would be so cool. <laughs> you know what? You know, you, we, we should ask the uh, race to uh, organize and, you know, maybe let him jump. Let him jump. Let him jump. All right. You know. I'm not sure that the mechanics would agree with you on that <laughs> one. <laughs> Lisa Price, I miss you too. It's great to have you on the live stream. And, yes, John Bruno did take uh, the overall at the World Finals this year, and that's going to increase his gap in the lead for uh, the World Series. So John Bruno Pastorello did win just a few minutes ago in the endurance class. Number four, uh, that's your in fifth position holder on the outside line of the option. One, yep. four, one. Once again, that is U.S. is Reese Geis. Yeah, Reese Geis have already taken uh, one championship this weekend. She's an incredible rider out of Scottsdale, Arizona. And she's only 17 years old. She's got an amazing career ahead of her, and she's already a five-time national champion. Just to give you a sense, and she's in fifth. That's the caliber That's the caliber, of yeah, of, of the riders. And that's number eight from France, Lou Deliot. Yeah, Lou Dardalot has a, an incredible family of racers, Valentin Dardalot, who has taken many world championships out here, and that's his sister out on the track, ripping it up. She is in, I do believe, still in fourth. No, she moved. She dropped Third? to fifth. She oh, moved she to fifth. Back. Yeah, and uh, Reese is up in fourth now. All right. In that case, thank you for the update. We'll do the quick rundown. It is Eminelli Ortendahl leading. Yes. Yasmin e. Prowse in second. Yep. Got that. And then you've got River Varner. She's still there. In third. And then Lou Dardalot. In fourth. And then Reese Geis. That's right. She's uh, pulling the top five. All right. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Pro Ski Women Grand Prix. This is going to be our first of three gruelers. And these pro divisions are doing quite a few laps. Well, the women, uh, the Pro Ski Women Grand Prix will not have long to rest, so they're going to go another moto before the break. Oh, wow. Okay. And again, you're watching uh, the live race action here at Lake Havasu City, Arizona. And a special thanks, of course, to all of our sponsors. Now, don't forget, please, please, please follow us on all of the social media channels. Uh, we're on Facebook at Jet Ski World Series, but we're also on Instagram. Oh, man. Jet Ski World the, Series. Did, did you say YouTube? I did not yet say it, but Jet Ski World <laughs> Series is where you need uh, to follow Well, you us. know what? TikTok. Oh, now you're just putting me under the pressure. Yeah. At Jet Ski World okay. Series. What What about the website? You should go there. WGP1.com. You're right. That's what it is. <laughs> that is you are correct. Oh, too funny. Yeah. The main thing, guys, um, we really love the interaction. This is our favorite part is to be able to answer questions and Give some feedback. Congratulations, by the way, to Emma Nilly Ortendahl taking win number one in the pro ski women class. Beautiful job from this young lady out of Sweden. 60 points. Yep, 64, speaking of that, yeah. is going to be Yasmin E. Prowse. She's going to take second. As you can tell, these girls race together a lot. Yasmin E. Prowse coming in and uh, giving a shout-out to Emma Nilly. And it is... Uh, we're just looking for that third place rider, which is going to be, be 23. River. That should be River coming in here, right? Yep, River Varner. 
great racer. And uh, as we finish that up, we'll get ready there for our next race. All right, that wraps up mode number one for the Pro Ski Women Grand Prix right here in Lake Hawazu, Arizona. Round number three of competition for the WTP number one Waterjet World Series. Up next is the Pro Runabout 1100. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be open. Pro Runabout 1100, open category. This is the All right, this is motor number one action also. All right, Gary Dixon down on the line and uh, boat number nine. Looks like he's got the uh, pole position on the inside. And I'll pull that up for you in just one second so I can get you the real meal deal here. And that is gonna be uh, Corey Dixon on the pole on the outside. And then right next to him is gonna be a boat number three. And three is Omut Sali. That's going to be a ride in for us. And then boat number 142, Kasadit Tara Pratep, is also on the line. And he is going to be on that uh, inside as well, on the 45. And 142 is on the outside of the inside. And then on that outside split is uh, going to be boat number 45, Supatat Foot Raccoon. And then uh, right next to him is going to be a boat number 26. That's Louis Bakizen hailing from the Philippines. Already got a championship this weekend. We already awarded him on Friday, so he's back for more fun and games. Boat T33 back out there as well, and I do believe that's another ride-in. And that's Lahip, who is going to be, uh, Arawat Lahip is going to be racing as well. All right, back up here. That's uh, number 45 from Thailand, Supatat Pudakun. Getting a little anxious there. Yeah, I can see why. You know, I just noticed uh, our race director up there. I, I will point that out to you the next time you yeah. let's, uh, let's the motor go. I like the I like the way he act. You know, his actions. Uh, he's very fun to watch. All right, yeah. that was Kasadi Terapratev on the outside inside who had a great start, and we're going to see uh, where he ends up. And it is Cassidy Terapati. There it is, number uh, 141. Well, on the outside 8142, split. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right. He's on the inside split, and he's going to meet up with Supatop Foot Raccoon on the outside. So Thailand versus Thailand. Uh, all right, we got a green flag. It is a go for the pro right about 1100 open category for moto number one. Yep, 142 takes the whole shot. That's Cassidy Terapati, followed by Supatop Foot Raccoon. Top two tie riders already dominating pro runabout 1100 on this start. Yesterday, um, didn't that we see? I uh, guess it had some craft problems at uh, some moto, right? Everybody Yesterday. has craft problems yeah, out I mean, here at some point. <laughs> you cannot escape I mean, in the that. middle of the race, I mean, he was leading, you he, know, was. he was leading you know, the first uh, two moto, but he, he accumulated what? Uh, 120 points, right? And then he did. Yeah, yeah, and then he broke. Yeah, he, he actually broke, lost. Yeah. He lost that championship. But uh, Kasady Terapratip, no stranger to wins. He took the win in Poland in round number one. His favorite music, by the way, is Money Trees. I thought you'd really love that. This rider out of Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, Kasady Terapratip, always going to be a threat on the water. He's only 21 years old, but he has an incredible race career. And Super Top Foot Raccoon right behind him. No slouch in the uh, awards part. Two-time World right. Cup, King's Cup, two and a one-time Thai champion, two-time IJSBA World Champion, and he is fast. Oh, my gosh, you know Book Sermsuan? He just said 45, a.k.a. Fat Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Book, you are too evil. I am going to tell Supatot you said that. Book, of course, good friends with him, and we miss you, Book. We wish you were here on the water today. He's but usually here, though. He yeah. is. He, he is an amazing rider, and him and his wife are so sweet. Did you know they raise turtles? Oh, yeah. Is that not the coolest? That's I think nice. if we that get rare to Rare turtles. To, I think it's rare, tur rare, you, rare turtles. Really rare, right? Yeah. Yeah. If, he come, if we come to Thailand, will, do you think he'll bring us some turtles to take a look at? I'm throwing yeah. it out there, yeah. bud. Yeah. You can always ask him. I just did. <laughs> All right, you guys are watching Louis Bahizen, and Louis, I do believe, is up in third, and this rider is so spectacular to watch. 
love watching Louis Bihis and he hails from the Philippines and Louis and Paul Del Rosario and BJ Ang have been a huge part of growing the Philippines team and talk about growing teams this young man <laughs> has been growing quite a bit with the Cambodian team this is Omut Sali and Omut Sali up and forth all righty don't forget don't forget today uh, at 2 p.m. 2 to 4, Don, okay. we're going to be going live all over the world wow. for the final moto, the championship motos of the pro categories. Holy so focus. don't forget to check us out or check out the information of what channels we're going to be on on our website, WTP1.com. So, it, you know, and we'll be on uh, Arizona time. Okay. Okay, so. So it's 2 o'clock Arizona time. 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. Uh, I think for those of you guys listening in, that probably be uh, Pacific time. Pacific, of course, brother yeah. side. Yeah, Pacific. Yeah. All right, you're watching uh, the different riders as they come through. Kasadi Terra Pratik is leading in the pro run about 1100, followed by Supatop Fu Raccoon. And these guys have been dominating over the past, really, I'd, I'd say almost two decades of racing. We have seen the Thai riders do incredibly well in the runabout divisions. But you know what's new for the Thai riders? You have started to dominate in stand-up as well. Oh, and yes, yes. The, the twins, They're, yeah, the Moli twins in well, particular. Wow. What, if you remember, you know, early on, you know, a couple of years back, that Thai riders are more, uh, love, you know, they like the sitting, the, the sitting crap. Yes. Right? Well, they're good mechanics, but now, really but good now, mechanics. But now, you know, they're, now they're, they're getting a lot, a lot of, a lot, I mean, I mean a lot better in the... Uh, the ski category. I think they have uh, really started to open up into the different disciplines in the results speak for themselves. We'll talk about it throughout the day. By the way, the gentleman back in third, Louis Behesen, just another little quick trivia on him. He actually took the win in this class in Vichy. So it was a huge win for Louis, and it did put him up in the overall points. So you are watching Pro Run About 1100. Pasadi Terra Pratip on the gas, and he's got to be thinking in his head, did a lot of work on that boat last night. We're going to make sure that boat stays together so that Kasadit has an opportunity for a boat. Well, let's just hope, right? Because, I, uh, I mean, he was doing so well. He bit of a heart. It was a bit of a heartbreaker. And he, Eduardo, knew, he knew he had it, but then, you know, it was a heartbreak. It, it really was. Uh, let's see. All right, we're halfway through the moto here for the Pro Runabout 1100 Open. 142 from Thailand. Gets it to deep, still in the lead, followed by number 42. Also from Thailand, Supertat Fudagun and number 90, and uh, followed behind is 26 from the Philippines, Louis Buisan, rounding off the top three there. Yep, Louis Buisan, I love his music choices. He actually loves to listen to classic music. And there's Omut Sali, number three, right there in the middle of your screen. Oh, Omut Sali up in four. Right for Cambodia. Yeah, they've already been bringing home a ton of medals between... Uh, uh, the Cambodian riders, Philin, uh, Philin Sali, Omut Sali, and Mustin Men all have been doing incredibly well. Osman Men and even Oak, their brand new rider, Oak, got Oak. on the podium this year. Yep. Oh, great, great job for a fairly new team, Cambodia. Only seen them on the racing scene, maybe I guess about the past six years, seven years. Beautiful morning here in Lake Havasu City. You can see how the conditions change so much throughout the day. Right now, it's pretty quiet out over the water, but you can expect a ton of boat traffic. Later oh, it's today. coming. Yep. When, when people start waking up, and, and especially Sunday, too. Yeah. It's all, a beautiful day. All the recreational yep. boats yep. will be Our out, and they coming. love to hang out on the backstretch and watch the riders. I mean, it is my first time here in uh, Arizona, and uh, I still can't get over the back, you know, the background of the mountains and stuff like that. And it's, it's just I such think a it's, savage looking landscape. You know, and when I, you know, we, when, when I come outside in the morning, it just, it feels good to see the mountains in the morning. Yeah, it is. You know, coming from the back, when I come from the, from the house. All right, back to this race as we uh, work through the final couple of laps. You are watching Supatat Foot Raccoon. Supatat rides for a K45 Maxima team. That's why we've got the K45 on the side of that boat. And 
the super tight is uh, in second. He enjoys rock climbing and rally driving, and he actually also rides for Dean's team, two-time World Cup champion and a one-time Thai champion. That is your second-place rider. And there's Kasadit Terraprati. And after that hole shot, he has not looked back. Valentina Lascana in this class as well, but I think she might be back in six. All right, we're watching number three, Oh Mood Sally. From Cambodia there, on a, in third position, going on the back stretch there as he approaches the option area. There's the um, number of T45 from Thailand. Subhatat Fudagun. All right, you guys, we're just getting a great view of that tower as uh, Omut Sali comes through. Omut riding up and forth. He was a late entry today. Oh, he moved to third. He moved up to third, guys. Sorry about that. And Louis Behesen in uh, fourth. All right, once again, if you're just joining us, you're watching the pro run about 1100 open. Hey, Kay, love you too, girl. Great to have you here. All right, the World Series rankings right now. Louis Behesen is in the lead on the World Series. Kasadit Terapratip in second. He needs these points. And Omut Sali in third, and Omut Sali is broke. Omut Sali is broke. So Louis Behesen will move back into that third place spot. And what a heartbreaker for a gentleman that was in third place in the World Series. And that body language says it all. What a on heartbreaker. The right, on the right side of the course. That's a dead stop, too. Oh, he's, yeah, he's going to be under a tow rope. Heartbreaker. Okay, and, uh, again. That's 26, Don, from uh, Philippines. Move back into third. Yeah, so your top three again. Kasadi Terra Pratip, followed by Supatat Fut Raccoon. And then Louis Behesen uh, rounds out your top three. You're watching Pro Run about 1,100. And that is uh, really going to put a hammer on the results for Omut Sali, who had come into this round in third. All right, now after this one, we're going to have the vintage, vintage category up next. That is the Philippine rider Louis Buisan. Coming out of the backside of the course, or coming in towards it. Towards the power bend going into the option once again is your overall third place position holder. As he works the final, approaching the final lap, but right now, 45 from Thailand. Silver top for the goon. Currently in second. Working his last half of the course. There about a half a lap separates third, uh, second and third. And I don't know about you, but my back is feeling it on this one. So <laughs> one of the things that these guys have to train for Nick is in, in its stand up and runabout. I know it may seem like maybe more runabout, but it's equally hard on the stand up riders. Lower back strength is truly critical, and as you can imagine, upper body strength here also critical it both matters, for stand up yep. and yes. the runabout riders. Um, but what may surprise you is how much we use our leg muscles, how much we're using our thighs and our calves. Even on the sit downs, it helps pivot the boat. It helps keep us stabilized in the boat. Oh, congratulations! Check the flag for Super Top Foot Raccoon. Well, that made a little shift. Uh oh, Terra Prati, making me wonder. No, oh, oh, no, he, was, he, no, he already came in first. He, he came, came in. first. Okay, we were behind a bit. Cassidy Terra Prati taking the win, and Super Top Foot Raccoon second, and that'll put Louis Bohesen in, in, in third. third. Wins his moto number one pro run about eleven hundred. All right, we're going to clear up the course of the Pro Runabout 1100 Open. 
as we approach the next category. That is uh, Philippines Louis Busian. All right, before we go to the next uh, category, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back after these messages. WGP1 Water Jet World Series Season 2023 is coming. Round 1, May at Mekalinki, Poland. Round 2, July at Vichy, France. Round 3, October at Lake Havasu City, USA. And final round, December at Tatia City, Thailand. Supported by Sports Authority of Thailand, National Sports Development Fund, Amazing Thailand. Jet Tribe. SBT is really your one-stop shop for all things personal watercraft. As someone with a small fleet of stand-up jet skis, I love that SBT has all the parts that I could possibly need to keep them running so that I can keep doing what I love. Jet Tribe. guys welcome back to the wgp1 water jet world series round number three and you are in for a treat we're watching vintage x2 down on the line and on the pole position on the inside it's going to be uh, shannon watson on the 17 boat 11 of greg matta on the 11 boat on this inside boat number 89 rich alburn is also lined up on the inside split. Boat number three, Carl Hosh, lined up on the inside. The triple aces is on that inside as well, and that's Terry Burke. Boat number 22, Nicholas Piera is on the inside, and uh, 89, now we're just getting a chance to watch uh, this inside split, and as we come to boat number three, that is Carl Hosh, and there's the triple. There's 22, and 22 is uh, Piera, Nicholas Piera. And uh, boat number 17 we're coming up on. And that is Shannon Watson. And the boat number uh, 997 is Andrew Freeman. And on the outside, outside is going to be boat number 121. And this is Vintage X2. It's going to be the first of two motos as you get a chance to see our big schedule for today. And don't forget, we're going to be doing a huge satellite uplink around the world this afternoon. So we are going to have some odd breaks in the racing. Please don't be alarmed. We'll keep you up to date as soon as we come back. But we have to follow the live uplink schedule. So there are going to be times we break away, and it might be in the middle of a race. So don't get upset. That's what's happening. We're actually having to broadcast around the world. We hit over a billion viewers in Lake Havasu. This is that outside lineup I was telling you about, 223. Louis Vendidito on the pole position, 730 is uh, also on the outside, that's Braden Seven. Boat 173 on the outside, Derek Rubeski. Boat 69 is on the outside. 
as well. And boat number 321 is Justin Lewinstra on the outside. And there's the outside, outside position or the center reel position. And that is one, two, one. So again, we are ready to go. This is a massive class of X2 riders. Wow, huge number of riders in here. And we do have some uh, add-ons. Danny Ortega is gonna be joining us today as a ride-in. And Danny's on boat number 121. He's gonna be the one on that outside. outside. And uh, Alfie uh, Fenwick also gonna be joining us from the UK and he's on boat number 67. Well, that gets you up to date as we get ready to go. Alfie Fenwick also lined up on that outside. But the pole position on the inside, keep your eye on it. That is Shannon Watson in the uh, 223 of Louis Vendito. See Miller Racing down there represented as we get ready to go. And man, these boats are a bit crazy and they didn't waste any time getting started. The outside, outside looking amazing on the uh, start. That was 121 of Danny Ortega. Looked like he got a pretty good start. We're going to zoom in. Oh, he didn't get a good start. He had one and then just went down. So tough break for D Danny Ortega. So much for that. Now let's go in tight here. And uh, that is uh, boat number one, Andrew Cesare on the inside. And boat number 419, that's Jeff Hansen on the outside split. Jeff already with a uh, win this week, and Jeff Hansen with the whole shot, followed by Andrew Cesare. So there is your top two, and Jeff Hansen multitasking this weekend. We've already seen him in the stand-up divisions with a, a great run, and right now he is wicking it up in <laughs> the X2 class. We call this vintage for a reason. Jeff Hansen, the gentleman just got the whole shot, says he loves tacos but hates Brussels sprouts. Can't fault a man that has that kind of uh, feedback. He builds his own boats, prefers a Yamaha Superjet, but he said, you know, I got the 419 that was just assigned to me years ago when he started racing. He was only 11, and he's just stuck, stuck with that number ever since. So Jeff Hansen, your leader in the X2 division. And he said, I'm still chasing another world championship. He's already got one world title back in 2021 in uh, the X2 class. Andrew Cesare in second out of Hawthorne, California. Sour cream king Jeff Hansen. Ryan, you are kidding me. Is that for real? <laughs> that is awesome. Doug Wolf, I totally agree. This needs to be a pro-am class. Okay, you are uh, watching the action here from the outside split. And that is Jeff Hansen, apparently the sour cream king. And I know there's a story, Ryan. You're going to have to share that story with me. His first win for Jeff Hansen was back in 2016. He's sponsored, by the way, by Hansen Sports. No huge surprise. And that number one boat, that is Andrew Cesare gentleman out of he lives in uh, Hawthorne California but he was actually born in Canada and this gentleman is uh, we talked about a little bit earlier he's a Land Rover and Jaguar mechanic so I know where to go if I need that taken care of boat number 57 either 57 or 67 that's Alfie Fenwick up in third Alfie uh, right in And you guys can follow along on the live timing and uh, see where your buddies are. The live timing at the IJSVA.com website. It's also on the WGP1 website. And 321 also up in there. That's the fourth place. That's Mr. Lewinstra. All right, so again, 419, uh, Jeff Hansen followed by Andrew Cicero in second. Uh, 
And it uh, looks like we've got Jeff Hansen followed by Andrew Cicero and then Alfie Fenwick in third. And I just heard uh, Greg Matta might be up in fourth and uh, Justin Lewinstra in fifth. All right, Don. I'm sorry to uh, keep you waiting. No, no, you're totally fine. Here's right, your you top know. five again. Uh, Jeff Hansen on the 419 is in the lead after an amazing hole shot. All right. And it's Andrew Cicero on the one boat in second. And then boat number 67, that's Alfie Fenwick in third. Greg Matta, Mad Dog Matta in fourth. And the 321 of Justin Lewinstra. He'll be fifth place, riding for 321 Kawasaki. His dad, Lee Lewinstra, is here. They've been a massive part of jet ski racing forever. Justin's got multiple brothers. They all race jet skis, and Lee did as well. So it's a family of racers. In fact, such a family of racers, they've got their own dealership out in Kansas. Oh, all right. Well, you know what? The, the reason why you know, I took some time real quick is I uh, remember yesterday uh -huh. the uh, demonstration of the two jet pilot guys, you know, going at it with the, the paintball. The combat fighters. The combat, yeah. You know, they wanted some information, you know, so I had to give them some, you know. You know what they want? They want pictures. Oh, <laughs> that is so cool. They wanted, nice they, they wanted that demo, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, they, they, the they were there, two nice guys there. They came up, stopped by, said hello, and, uh, you know, wanted to know if we can get them some pictures of, of them because they, they came here by themselves this, uh, uh, this so trip. so awesome. Talk a little bit about Greg Matta, who's out on the track. He's out of Las Vegas, born in England on a military base, of all things. He builds his own boats and uh, just learning how to tune correctly, he said. And he's grateful for all the people who taught him to do all that so he can do it himself. Greg Matta, a.k.a. Mad Dog, one of our uh, very fun characters on the course. But he's also a great racer. He's back and forth. 419, you're watching. That's Jeff Hansen. And uh, Jeff Hansen with... An amazing hole shot right now leading in the X2 class. And we're only going to have two motos of this today. The vintage uh, times two, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there is uh, Andrew Cesare, and I see Sophie Miller shouting out for Alfie. <laughs> She's uh, screaming on the live stream. Shara D. Snyder, we love the Lewinsters too. They're just, uh, they're just class acts for sure. Uh, and I'd oh. like to thank you uh for you to join, um, thank you for joining us here yep. live on the live stream, uh, Facebook and YouTube of the WGP number one the Waterjet World Series right here in Lake Havasu, Arizona. You're watching uh, Andrew Cesare right now, gentlemen. That's riding up in second. Oh, and I did get more 411 on uh, Jeff Hansen. He said he loves his tacos with extra sour cream, and so that's why he's called Sour, sour cream, cream Hansen. <laughs> Ryan, you are the bomb. You're cracking me up. All right, heading to the option uh, right as we speak. Your leader going on the outside line of the course, 419 from the United States. In the meantime, let me have this opportunity to thank our sponsors again. IJSBA, SBT, Yamaha, Kawasaki, Sea-Doo, River Racing, Blosion, Sol Solis, and Anderson Power Sports Commander Ride Now and VIP Racing. There is your leader, 419. Just really want to encourage you to, to please follow us on all of the social media channels and um, invite your friends to come hang out on the lake. We're completely interactive at Jet Ski, Series, uh, World, at Jet Ski World Series. And don't forget, we are uplinking to the satellite and going big time. Yeah, all over the world, Don. All over the world. All over the world. And, you know, yep. we hit a billion viewers in Thailand last year. I wonder if we can yeah. break the, the record, record this yeah. year. We will be on what? Pacific time, right, Don? Yes, sir. We're going to think we have Pacific time on that one. Thank yep. you. Check us out on the, uh, you know, your channels at our, our website, WGP number one. Or WGP1.com. Perfect. Okay, just checking the live stream out again because I know you guys have a lot. No mention of Kayla racing with the boys, Super Jet. Uh, well, I'm so sorry. She just wasn't up in that top five. But, yeah, let me do a shout-out for Kayla. She's on boat number seven. And let me take a look. Terry well, is as Dawn, well. That is oh, we got to write her down. It is. That's seems to be. Is that one or two? Is it one one two? Mm, that's hard to see. It seems like is that Colby Stringer? Oh, I think you're right. I think it's Colby Stringer. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at the live timing really quick. Jeff Hansen leading. Andrew Cesare second. Alfie Fenwick third. Greg Matta fourth. Lewinstra fifth. Vendito is sixth. Carl Hosh is in seventh. 
Uh, Acosta is in eighth, Burke in ninth, Bean in tenth, Rubelski in eleventh, Ortega in twelfth, and Alborn in thirteenth. All right, don't forget that you said that earlier. That is behind a little delay, right? Yeah, it is one lap behind, so okay. that's not going to be real, real time. But at least you get a sense that's of where your riders where are. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we're moving into the final lap already, Don, and still holding the lead is four one nine, heading toward the right side section of the course, and uh, I have. Information number one is in second, Don. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That's Andrew Cesare, yeah. who uh, also got some awards already this week, as well as Confirmed. Jeff Hansen. Oh, the yeah. white flag is out as yeah. well. Just wanted to point that out. And, Norm, I did do the rundown already, but one of the things that you can do, Norm, if you want, is go right to the live timing at the uh, IJSBA.com website or WGP1 website. They'll give you the live timing, Norm, and you can follow right along. It's just a lap down. And that way you're not missing a thing in case we get sidetracked talking exactly, about something yeah. else. Don't want you to miss out on where your buddies are. And number 67, uh, still holding third. Now, who's that, Elf? Is it Elf? Yeah, uh, yeah, right, Alfie Finwick up in third. And, okay. again, Matt fourth and Lewinstra in fifth, although we're watching some battling here from the back stretch. But, again, Jeff Hansen leading and Andrew Cesare in second, Alfie Finwick in third. Going into the... Oh, low, low, low. was that a little bumping right there? That was a lot of bumping right there. These boats not stable. That's your race leader, Jeff Hansen. He's going to choose to go on the inside split on the last lap, and he's got a lot of lap traffic to deal with. That is an opportunity for Andrew Cesare. Well, you're watching the final lap also coming in. This is his final option on the inside line. Trying to reach that checkered flag for motor number one in the vintage times two. Yeah, so following the uh, camera's action here to the inside split, it is going to be Jeff Hansen with the checkered flag. Beautiful job. One of two motos, and Jeff Hansen just nailed it for the first one. Oh, Mad Dog moved up into third. And it is going to be uh, Cesare for second, Mata for third, Alfie Fenwick fourth, Lewinster fifth, unofficially. You and uh, well, you're going to get a chance to see this yep. category one more time later on in the day for the final moto. As the course is clearing out, our next one would be the women runabout category. And there. All righty. So this is going to be... Um Renee Hill and Valentina Lascana and Adatia. All three at All right, Don. The WGP right number one Water Jet World Series 2023. This is our event category okay. or schedule for Sunday, October 8th, 2023, Don. Woo! There it is. Uh, we've already went through a, a couple of motos or a couple of categories. Next up will be the women's runabout, followed by the junior ski 10 to 12 four stroke light, and then the pro ski Grand Prix. Uh, third moto and of course the pro run about 1100 for today's next uh, category you really ought to just say we've got a massive schedule here oh yeah 27 and, that's, that's, and we got more we got on the a way. Lot. Yeah, yeah we, we got, got 27 races so get your snacks and your refreshments right by the lounge chair so that you can help us be couch commentators we would love oh, to have your feedback <laughs> today it's a lot i mean i mean I, Especially the second half. It's a gonna be amazing. It's packed. Competition, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be packed. Okay, so right now we don't have a ton of riders down on the line. This is the women's runabout classes, but what we do lack in numbers, we definitely make up in quality. Take a look at the lady on the pole position. That is a legend in our sport, Renee Hill two two. Yeah, so Renee Hill is uh, boat number 22. Not only is she an amazing racer, her son races, whole family into it. And not only that, but she rents out a ton of boats for riders around the world. So, again, Renee Hill, boat number 22 on the pole position. Next up is going to be, uh, I do believe, Valentina Lascana. And That's sure enough, 176, right? this yeah, okay. girl, she's got Frenchies. Uh, one of my favorite type of dogs. You got little Frenchies. Lola was all dressed up, and they're already out of the gate. Valentina Lascana with a great start on that. And Atatia, uh, right? Number 111 on the right side. Yeah, now the 111 is Atatia Wang. Uh, lady just won. She just won yesterday and took a championship, and right now she's back for another one. 
She's got her hands full, though. Valentina Liscano with the whole shot on the inside. I love watching Valentina race. And then the triple ones, that is Atatia on the outside, and that's who's going to meet up on the front stretch. Watching race number five. Well, we got the green flag for this one. It's a go for the women runabout. We are going two motos before you can find out who will be the champion here. So we're going to have motor number one or the first half here, and then the second half for motor number two. You know, I just have to brag up um, Atatia. She is a young racer, uh, very famous in Thailand, but when I saw her, I actually saw her for the first time when we started getting a chance to see these international tours on WGP1 series. I was so impressed with her poise on the line. It's very hard to get this girl nervous, and that is, to me, a huge advantage on the track. And you can see how this translates out on the track, how she keeps her dignity, and she also races a great race. Well, if, if you're looking at the middle of the screen, she is in the lead right now from Thailand. Atitia Ting Phung Bong. She did a beautiful hole shot for uh, Adetia. And uh, Valentina Lascana, your two top riders. And then, of course, Renee Hill out there. And Brian Finlinson from the live stream was like, isn't it amazing that Renee is racing? You know, Renee is no youngster. She is 60 years old, and she is still out there racing jet skis. How old? 60. Renee Hill, wow. 22. Yeah, I'm telling you, she is a machine. We have so much respect for her over here. And there's Valentina Lascana. One of the uh, social media ingenues. Well, so, uh, 176 uh, Valentina Lascano is in second overall right now. Yep, she works at the Miami Jet Ski Shop, and her dad, Sebastian, uh, helps build her boats. And by the way, that race number, that is uh, her birthday, the 17th of June. So, of course, okay, 176. Yeah, 176, all right. And, of course, Aditya also uh, on that track, Aditya Tianfeng Wang. She is, uh, she's a tough one to get information on. I've asked her several times to do uh, questions with me, but she's so shy. shy. Yep. It is hilarious. She literally now sees me, Nick, and she goes the other direction because she knows I'm going <laughs> to ask, ask her something. Question. Yeah. 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 And she has pretty good English, right? I think yeah, she I mean, understands you, but she's she's shy. She, stay away from me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, she's dodging the announcers for sure. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Again, you're watching uh, the indomitable uh, Renee Hill on the 22 boat. She's a two-time world champion, two-time national champion. She's had a ridiculous number of podium finishes on the world finals. Uh, when I tried to pin her down, she was like, Don, too many. I'm 60. <laughs> it's just too many. See, uh, people are... People at that, you know, the OG level, they don't, you know, don't mess around. That's right. She says she li dislikes unorganized people or places. <laughs> <laughs> she does love watercraft racing and sushi. Oh, well, that, you know, maybe know. one day she can eat sushi on the watercraft. That's right. Or come out to uh, Thailand, <laughs> hang out with us. So, All right. In the option, they go once again here for the moto. Yeah, you've got... Uh, That's 176, I think, on the outside line, followed by number 22 on the inside. So, again, Aditya Tiong. Can you help me with her last name? Tiong uh, Pung Wong. Say it again. Tiong Pung Wong. Tiong Pung Wong. I'm doing this on the live stream. You know that. <laughs> what? You, you guys, you guys, now you feel my pain. Because <laughs> you want to get their names right. That is so important, yeah, right, yeah. to make sure you get them well, right. Some, you know, sometimes it's, you know, the, the, the Thai names are pretty difficult. I mean, sometimes I don't get it right. You well, you, I mean? That sounded amazing. Okay, yeah. I'm going to have you do it again, but it's at a tia. A tia. Yeah, it's ping pong wong. Ping pong wong. Ping pong wong. Ping wong. Well, let's get back to the Every competition, Don. Every person on the live stream just busted out laughing on that one. All right, feel free to give me feedback on my pronunciations because that alone will yeah. be entertaining today. <laughs> hey, thank you guys for joining us. And again, please don't forget to follow us. Jet Ski World Series is going to be your code to every social media except for uh, TikTok where you have to do at the Jet at, Ski yeah, World you, Series. Please you gotta come add follow. you got to add that at. So YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Yep. And don't okay. forget the website too, you know, WGP1.com. There's your leader right there, Triple One, Atitia from Thailand coming in out of the option with the white flag. Final lap. 
Kind of fun. Uh, actually, we're here to cheer Orca 666. Well, thank you so much. Uh, by the way, race number on this is race number five, and it is women's runabout, and we're in the morning's series of races. And women's runabout is just the middle of the pack. We've got 10 races this morning uh, before we go to a very exciting uh, giveaway, and then we're going to do pro freestyle, and then we go to a whole afternoon of races. Well, um, I see the Commander Ski giveaway there, Don. Am I eligible for that giveaway? Uh, that, is a, that is a negative. You're not a junior. Thank you. <laughs> you have to be a junior. <laughs> I mean, you are mentally as, as well as I am. So. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, maybe I can pull it off. I, I don't know. You, I'm not even going to answer that. We're watching uh, Women's Runabout, and we have uh, three competitors on the track, Aditya, or Adia, Aditya. I'm never going to get this. Atitia. Atitia. Oh, I got Oh, it. you Atitia. got that one. There you go. She is a beautiful young lady, and she is leading this race. Also quite the warrior with the win in motor number one. Atitia takes the win for Thailand in Moto one women's runabout. Race five. And there is Valentina Lascano. She'll be second. Renee Hill, third. Next up is the Junior Ski, 10 to 12, four-stroke light. Yep, now this one is, uh, the young ones are going at it once again here for the Moto. And we've got uh, the lineup here for you in just one minute. And but once again, ahead. Once again, that is our schedule on the, your screen in Lake Havasu City, USA. The Junior Ski 10 to 12 four-stroke light. That's coming up next for motor number one. And then uh, we're going to continue on with the Pro Ski Grand Prix and the Pro Runabout. All right, we're on junior ski, 10 to 12. This is going to be your four-stroke lights, and you can see that big 319 number. That is your inside uh, pole position. And then right to, yeah, actually, we're going to go reverse. That's the outside outside with boat number uh, 41 you saw first. That was Tristan Hebert, followed by 750. Two, that's from, uh, that's Gavin. Yeah, that's Gavin Hoggart. And then Orca is on the line on the 211. He's on the outside. No, I just had the word that he has a lot of fans right now watching as we speak, cheering him on. Not even surprised. Britton Reinhardt is on the pole position on the outside, and that is uh, Kyle down there from Works going to be holding for Britton, and she is a little local rock star. And then on the inside split, we've got vote number 515 on the outside. Inside. Well, actually, there's the pole. Perfect. 319. That is Bentley Cox on the pole position on the inside. And then UA7, that is uh, Felix Mirninko from Ukraine. Very fast little rider. Boat number 44 also on this line. That is Ali Al Ali uh, riding for the UAE. And boat number 515 is going to round out the field, and that is Ty Smith from the U.S. Ty is sponsored by Go Fast UA USA. And there is your lineup as we get ready to go. And by the way, 10 to 12, you can start in the tray. So you'll notice that that's a little different. Wow, good start. Here we go to the home shot. Yeah, Ali, all, Ali, actually, with a great start. You can see him right in the middle of the inside split. All right, we got riders from the Ukraine. We got the riders from UAE, US, and Thailand. We're going to zoom in here and get you some race numbers for this whole shot. I love how they do that for us. And that's number 44. Yeah. From the UAE, Ali yeah, Alali. Ali, yeah, Ali and a great start. You could see it developing from that start line. So Ali with the whole shot on the oh, inside. Oh, there it is, 2-1-1. Yep, that is going to be Orca on the outside, and he is going to meet up with Ali Al Ali. So the UAE in Thailand, who's going to get the whole shot? Looks like I, Orca. Orca. Beautiful run. Nakura Sirachai from Thailand in craft number 2-1-1. Followed by Ali Ali. Ali Al Ali, and that is the gentleman from the UAE. So Thailand and the UAE are your top two riders. I mean, uh, Orca already got one title yesterday, so let's see how well he'll do here for the junior ski in the 12-4 stroke light category. 
The junior ski, 10 to 12, four stroke lights are out on the track. And uh, we'll get you some stories here as we get ready to go. But first and foremost, having a chat there about uh, Nakara Silichai. Gentleman's name is, nickname is Orca, only 12 years old. You know, he became the youngest person to ride a jet ski across the Gulf of Thailand. Thailand. Yep. What an incredible feat. He was only nine years old when he completed that trip from coast to coast. It took him five hours and 49 minutes to do that uh, particular feat. We should get him registered that's, in the Guinness Book of World Records for that. That's, uh, that's good practice for endurance. His mom is uh, Kasama, or June, and he took the honor oh! of Asian top athlete. 2023, and he's down. He went a little bit too aggressive on Orca. the turn there. Yeah, Orca went down, Nick, and that is a tough break. And as you can see, a couple of riders did get past him. Now he is going to have to do make good. Well, yeah, we have, he has to play catch up now, and we're just about halfway through in the junior ski 10 to 12 four stroke light. Now he's got a lot of work ahead of him. Wow. So Dropped the third position, Don. Alley. 2 1 1. Yep. Nakara Sirachai from Thailand. That is going to be a break then for Britton Reinhardt because she moved up into second. And uh, it looks like Ty Smith also moved up that 515 boat. In fact, you can see that boat moving around. So, so it's 44, 851, and 515. Yes, sir. So 44, Ali, uh, Ali from the UAE, followed by Britton Reinhardt in second, and 515 of Ty Smith. And so that I, means that Orga is in fourth. I think so. We'll see if he's able to get back up into third. All right, let's Lost a little, not much. Well, you know what? I'm sure we, there he goes the replay, Don. Let's see what happened there. It looked like he just slipped out of the back of the tray. A little uh, correction off of the turn, and unfortunately, just wasn't in the right position. And those boats are not stable, right? It look, they make them look really easy to ride, but those boats are not stable. And if you roll that the wrong way, you're off the boat. I mean, it's, especially when you got pressure. You know what I mean? You fall in crap. You got pressure. And you, you know you're. You're flustered sometimes. Very good yeah. point, Nick. Yeah, it's easy to be doing really well if everything's handling good. But it's one of the things I love about Orca and Otto. Those guys train every day with Nacorn. Yes. Nacorn, obviously, a very celebrated jet ski racer. And there's uh, Britt and Reinhardt, and they practice a ton. So I suspect that he's getting his focus back pretty quickly. Well, let's just hope that he can catch up with the rest of the group. Got another couple At least get, motos. get to the top three. Yeah. Got an opportunity for sure. This is a multi-moto race, and there's Ty Smith. Ty is a, a great racer out of the uh, U.S. There's 2-1-1 once again playing catch up with the rest of the crowd. Orca or Nakara Sira Chai. We're on the right side, sweeper section of the course. Orca trying to catch some time. Meanwhile, the uh, third place rider, Ty Smith, two-time world champion. And he hates zucchini. I don't know why we do that, but every time we ask him what they like and hate, it tends to be food. <laughs> and there's your race leader, Ali Al Ali. From the UAE. Ali That's number 41 just coming through. Yeah. Or is that 141? Tristan Hebert Tristan actually Hibbert, out of yeah. Kansas. Tristan Hebert out of Wichita actually. He's got a commander boat that he rides. And he races 41 because he said 42 was taken by my cousin. So I took 41. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they just make it simple. You know, That's They do make, make it simple. simple. There's boat number uh, 319. I think that boat is back in uh, fifth. And that is Bentley Cox. Also from the United States. Mm -hmm. Approaching the option with these guys here coming in. Now, if you're just joining us, you're watching the junior ski 10 to 12 four stroke light category. Your leader's number 44 in the meantime from the UAE, Ali Alali. Earlier on, it was a 2 1 1 from Thailand. Nakara was in the lead as he fell off the craft a little bit, wow. causing him to lose position. Yeah, it's a bit of a recap on that as the white flag comes out. So time's running out for Orca to be able to get into the top position on this one. But again, multiple motos. There's your race leader, 44, Ali Al Ali. And uh, I mean, it's Again, a good place to be. You know, when you finish first in the first uh, first moto, it gives you that boost, that it, energy, that confidence. It does. Well, it confidence. does, too. It does two things to you. I, th I agree with you. It gives you, a, like, that mojo, if you will, coming into the next race. Yep. But I also feel like if less you're trained for that, it also gives you a lot of pressure. Uh, 
Um, these kids do this right, though. They have as much fun on the water as they do off the water. <laughs> they're the ones that are going to pool parties every night, slumber parties. I mean, yeah. They're having a gas I mean, here I remember, at the World Finals. I mean, I remember, you know, I've, I've heard, you know, Orca story when he was younger, when he's, you know, with him and his friends, six, seven years old. His dad's him to go practice, but he's with his buddy playing a video game. In the oh, back. no. <laughs> yeah, he does love to game. I would say that's something we have in common. Yeah. I love to game as well, so I can pr appreciate that. Uh, of course, as you can imagine, the live stream has blown right up with shouting and cheering for Orca. He's very, very popular back in uh, Thailand. And his dad, uh, as we shared yesterday, Nate Horn, a famous actor, checkered flag drops for Britton Reinhardt. Uh, also for uh, Ty Smith. Oh, no. That's a lot of position he lost there. Yeah, I think I mean, he, what, he was one of the favorites to finish first here in the junior ski 10 to 12 four stroke light. Fishing fourth is uh, Orca or Nakara Sirachai. So Britton Reinhardt takes the win with Ty Smith second. Nakara, uh, Nakara actually moved all the way back up into third. And Ali El Ali uh, went down on that last lap and is going to end up in fourth. No, Chris, I wasn't. Sorry about that, sir. Yeah, sorry about that. We got a, a little bit sidetracked trying to get some information on the live stream. So it is Britton Reinhardt with the lead in who took the uh, win in that first medal. Thank you, bud, for the check. And, Chris, I appreciate that. Always just message us if you feel like we're saying something off. I'll get that fixed right away. All right, we had the low. Uh, I had to correct myself there. I think uh, two one one came in third from Thailand. Nakarasi Rachai. So at least he's uh, in the top three for the category. Next up is the Pro Ski Grand Prix for a moto number three. Now, in this category, the Pro Ski Grand Prix, coming in first for the first two motos so far, Quentin Bosch from Belgium accumulated 120 points so far, followed by U.S.'s Cole Kramer, with a total score of 92 collected. Then Jeremy Perret with 91 points overall in third. Then you got Ander Keller from Denmark with 89 points so far in fourth. And Kevin Retterer the, uh, from Austria with 82 points so far as of uh, two motos. Uh, well, we were just about getting ready for motor number three here. Pro Ski Grand Prix. And there's number 98. That is Quinton Bosch. On the shoreline waiting for his cue. All right, and you can see this. They're still uh, in staging. They have not put the boats in the water. Here's the World Series rankings as we get ready for the third of four motos in Pro Ski Grand Prix. And the World Series rankings coming into this, Jerry, Jeremy Perret and uh, QB second, Rafael Moran third, Mika Perret in fourth, uh, Nacho Armias in fifth, Kevin Redder in sixth, Anders uh, in seventh, and Anders actually in eighth, Morgan Perry in ninth, Severy in tenth, Valentin in eleventh, and Alec in twelfth. So Jeremy Perry followed by QB1. And then Moran and Michael Perry. That's how it stands right now. Again, that's, that's just talking show. about the World Series. Let's talk about what's happening 
on the water From at Spain? the World Finals after two motos. And and what an impossible feat has been so far. Quentin Bosch has taken the win in both of these motos. Cole Kramer is up in second right now with 92 points to Quentin Bosch's 120 points. Jeremy Perret is in third with 91 points. Anders Keller in fourth with 89. And Kevin Redder in fifth with uh, 82. Michael Perret is up in the points as well. He's in sixth with 66 points. Revan Harris is in seventh with 55 points. And Valentin Dardalot in eighth. Sebastian Girello in ninth. Jake Pierce in tenth. Devin Farthing is in 11th. That's how it stands as... We take a look at the points for the World Finals round. Yep. Now, let's do a recap of yesterday, Nick, because it was sure. a little crazy. Um, as you know, uh, yesterday in that first moto, we had a little bit of craziness happen. Uh, Sever, uh, Severi, and Severi from Finland actually had to go to the hospital. He's totally fine, but he did uh, break his shoulder and uh, also bruised, right? broke a rib and broke a finger yesterday. So he probably will not be on the line today. So was he in a ski or was he playing football? Right? It sounds <laughs> like it, but he was actually on a ski. Wow. Uh, totally okay. The other two uh, mishaps was Revan Harris, who actually went back out and raced yesterday. But Revan Hever Harris came in, and he had such a big gash, you could actually see bone on the really? on him. Yeah, but it was right wow. on top of his shoulder. He was back out racing in moto number two. He is just a machine. They got him sewed up and ready to go. Final person was uh, Harley Ritchie, who had took that big bounce over the log jump. Yep. Um, that was quite the Superman. Anyway, he's okay, but he bruised his ribs and. Well, I saw him standing. You know, I saw him standing there. Yeah. You know, he's he's on the shoreline. He's on the shoreline. So, everybody's there. Everybody's okay. I just wanted to get you guys uh, an update. All right. If you're just uh, joining us right in time for the Pro Ski Grand Prix category, right here at Lake Havasu, Arizona, we're live from the United States. Yeah. For Chris, the World uh, Series. Go ahead, Don. No, I just wanted to say to everybody on the live stream, too, thank you, guys. If you see something that we're missing, again, uh, Nick and I are working off of a TV screen. We're not able to see the whole track. So if you see right. stuff unfolding, that's part of the cool thing. I wasn't kidding when I said be a couch commentator. You are more than welcome to chime in and give us feedback. We love it. We want this to be as awesome as possible for you yeah, guys we, as well. We, yeah, we want the interaction. <laughs> okay. Okay, you said that a little scary. Quentin <laughs> Bosch is on the pole position on the inside. And uh, right next to him is going to be uh, the gentleman on boat at number 50, Michael Pere, riding for uh, Dustin Matsuris. But he's on Matsuris' boat, which is awesome. So Michael Pere in second. Uh, it's going to be Valentin Dartalot also on the inside on that number 8 boat. The 88 is Jake Pierce. And that number 27 boat, well, that is the young phenom from Millie Cavasu, Sebastian Girello. And you can see us uh, pulling up the pictures for these guys. And then 44, that's Rafael Moran. He's on the outside of the inside. Pole position is going to be Jeremy Pere on the outside. And on the outside, outside is 116 of Devin Farthing. And they're off. And Quinton, a little bit of a sleep start, but he is going to make up for it right in this mid-range. All right, in a whole shot they go here for the Pro Ski Grand Prix. Now, Don, these guys are on the top of the game, the best in the world in their category. So it's going to be fun category to watch here. This 98 right out there with the advantage here from Belgium, yep. Quentin Bosch. All right, Quentin Bosch on the inside, and it is a battle between Cole Kramer, and it looks like uh, Rafael Moran or Camden Powell putting the pressure on him. Cole Kramer lit up the outside split, and he is going to meet up with Quentin Bosch on the front. Quentin Bosch had the whole shot, but will he be able to hold it off with Cole Kramer riding like a crazy man behind him. Quentin Bosch on the gas, followed by Cole Kramer, boat number 202. Well, let's just hope uh, that, you know, he can chase him down from the U.S. Bosch is in front. I think the game should be right now in the first two right now because uh, Kramer is really close. And then we look up and just like that, Quentin Bosch moves his trying to move away on the back side or the back stretch as Quentin heads into the option already. Yeah, Quentin Bosch lit up the afterburners on that start. He's had two great motos and he came into this with a tremendous amount of confidence. He's already got a 7.50 lead on Cole Kramer, who is no slouch on a boat. Well, so. he's on the out, uh, he's on the inside uh, Cr uh, Kramer from the US already breaking breaking apart. Bosch on the outside line. 
All right, Kevin Redder up in the uh, top four spot. And it uh, looks like we've got Jeremy Pere in third. I'll get you these numbers in just a minute. That is Jeremy Pere following Cole Kramer. Currently in third is uh, Jeremy Pere. Yep, and then uh, should be Kevin Redder back on that 91 boat. He's on borrowed property, blew the hole out of his boat yesterday on and that long jump. And the long jump, jump is open. Open, open, open. And Jeremy Pere pops over that, no dramas. Jake Pierce also up in the top five. There's number nine. Is that number 90? That is uh, Kevin, 91. right? 91. Yeah, we're looking 91. for 91. Yep, that's Kevin Rithrow a few seconds ago. That's 202 once again, currently in second. Cole Kramer from the United States trying his best to chase down Quentin Bosch from Belgium. It's not going to be an easy job to do. He's on the outside line of the option. That is Kramer, Cole Kramer. All right, uh, just Quentin coming Bosch through. Quentin Bosch also on the outside, Don. Yeah, Quentin Bosch just coming through from that outside, drops onto the front stretch. Quentin Bosch hails from Belgium, started racing Yamaha Super Jets when he was a junior, and he has been a legend in this sport. And you are watching his ride as he comes through. Cole Kramer in second. Cole had a, a great run and Cole is second overall in points coming into this third moto. Jeremy Pere is third in points and third on the track. Well, the separation is getting wider and wider between Bosch and Kramer right now. All right, so looking back just a little bit further, it looks like Michael Pere is in fourth unofficially. Uh, I believe Anders Keller up in fifth, Kevin Redder in sixth, Pierce in seventh. I'll give you the update. I'm, I'm pretty shocked that Kevin Rither hasn't, you know, already up in the top five already. Man, they've got Harley Ritchie back out on the track after those uh, sore ribs yesterday. That is number 5-0 from France, Mikhail Pere, on your screen there working his way. In, uh, into the option area. Yep, so Michael Pere, a gentleman that is also in the World Series points, running back in the fourth place spot. Man, that guy is funny. And Jake Pierce in, oh, that is, Anders Keller in fifth. Anders Keller, again, your top five, uh, Quentin Bosch, Cole Kramer, Jeremy Pere, Michael Pere, and Anders Keller, who has had one of the best years I have ever seen for this gentleman out of Denmark, married to uh, DT. And he's got a brand new son, just a couple of, I think he's a little, uh, almost three years old, and he is just a feisty but a total sweetheart. His name's Albert. And Albert already loves jet skis. Well, maybe one day he gets on there and have his dad work his magic on him. Amen. What a hole shot. Um, just a recap from Quentin Bosch. He didn't even get a good start, but, man, when he came out of that mid-range, when that thing hammered, it was immediately noticeable that Quentin Bosch has got an incredible boat that he's working with this year and it is showing on the water. All right, we just got a confirmation on the position, Don, and you got it right on the button, 100% right. Thank you, sir. On the outside right now, though, is number 98, Quentin Bosch, your current leader, followed by 202. U.S. is Cold Kramer. 72 is Jeremy Parade from France, followed by brother. Also, of course, he's from France. Mikhail and 5-5 five five, rounding off the top five from Denmark is Ander Keller. Yeah. It's going to be hard for him to catch up, Don. Is. He's pretty far far out front. It is going to be hard. He's a 19-time world champion talking about your race leader. Quentin but it's not going to be hard for number 72 to catch up with uh, Cole Kramer, though. I'll tell you, he's not that far off. So we are going to watch the uh, battle between Jeremy Pere and Cole Kramer. That is your second and third place uh, competitors. Jeremy Pere, 15-time world champion, six-time French champion, two-time European champion. He comes from an entire family of racers. And as I mentioned earlier this week, this is the first time at Lake Havasu City that we have seen all three Pere brothers on the water at the same time. Pretty awesome to get a chance to watch this race family get a chance to compete all together here at Lake Havasu City. And, you know, I think it's a good thing. You know, when you travel together with your family, especially your brothers and stuff like that, it's fun. You know, it, it makes it makes the trip fun. It makes the competition fun. You know what I mean? Yep. 
Cole Kramer, the gentleman that's up in second, what a story. He lives in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. He was born in February 2002, and his race number reflects that, 202. He works in the family business, and he did a lot of work underneath the hood of that boat. Started racing at 12 years old, and he's a four-time world championship. Do not count out Cole Kramer. He is in second in the points right here in Lake Havasu, and Kevin oh, Redder Kevin at six. Sixth, sixth position. Riding in crab number 91, but his number is really number 90. Well, here's the situation, right? So uh, yesterday, uh, when Kevin Redward went over the log jump, he blew out the hull on the boat that he was using. So JB Gasparone actually uh, jumped in, and they got a boat from JB. This is JB's boat that he's using. And then you can see uh, boat That's number, number uh, 15. Right behind. That's uh, Harley Britchie. Uh, the gentleman that got injured on the log jump back out on that water, and he is in sixth place. you got to hand it to this gentleman from Great Britain, Harley Ritchie. He gets my award for Iron Man this weekend. Well, riding pretty good, too, I'll tell you that right now. Going into those buoys pretty uh, tight. All right, so Harley Ritchie up in six. Again, your recap, Quentin Bosch leading Cole Kramer, second, Jeremy Perre in third, and uh, Michael Perret in fourth, Anders Kellers in fifth, and Kevin Redder in sixth, and Harley Ritchie is seventh place. Welcome all to the live feed right here in the Lake Havasu, Arizona, in the United States. And there is Jeremy Perret, the uh, gentleman that is up in the World Series points in the lead. And uh, Quentin Bosch needs these points to uh, try to reduce that point between him and Jeremy Perret. Well, he uh, the point deficit there, but right now looking good, though, 100, 120 points. So far, great performance and looking good here. More number three also is uh, Quentin. We'll have to see if number 72, Jeremy Perret, can catch up. It's possible. With Cole Kramer here, because uh, that's where the action should be at right now. Because yeah. Bosch is too far out to catch up. And there is uh, Quentin Bosch, your race leader. Working on the outside line of the course of the option on the left. Coming in once again towards the tower right there just passing by. Yeah, and you know his goals have certainly changed over the years. Right now his life goal, Bill is solid base for himself so that he can provide for his future wife and the future kids so they can have all the comforts that they need. Him and his dad, Danny Bosch, have been a part of the racing scene for years. In fact, they came over from Belgium and raced at the World Finals as a junior. And back in those days, Quentin Bosch was about the same height as a handle pole. Boy, <laughs> how things have changed. He's actually taller than his dad. And uh, I would safely say, even though his mom and his dad both raced, Quentin Bosch honored his parents by using the race numbers from both of his parents, the 9 and the 8. And that's how he got that's his race eight. number. That's your overall second position holder, number 202. Yep, we've had a bunch of questions on the live stream about, oh, I'm so sorry, about the top 10 and a little bit back. Uh -huh. Now, just be aware that I'm giving you this a lap down, but here's what it is. Quentin Bosch in the lead, Kramer second, Jeremy Pere third, Michael Pere fourth, Andrew Keller fifth, Redderer in sixth, Richie in seventh, Dardalot is in eighth, Pierce is in ninth, Armias in tenth, Farthing eleventh, Harris in twelfth, John Fan in thirteenth, Torello in fourteenth, Solonen in fifteenth, Rafael Moran way back in fourteenth. That's the unofficial results. You can check that out on the live timing system. Well, while the riders are going at it, let me get this opportunity, Don, to thank the sponsors quickly: IJSBA, SBT, Yamaha, Kawasaki, Sea-Doo, Riva Racing, Blosion, Solus. Anderson Power Sport, Commander Ride Now, and VP Racing right here at the WTP number one World Series right yep. in Lake Havasu, Arizona, Don. Uh, so we've got a lot of great people on the live stream watching, and I'm just going to throw this question out. I know McCluggage is watching this as well. Chris and uh, whoever else wants to chime in on it, who do you think watching on the tire jump or the log jump, who do you think is handling this log jump best today? I know Cole Kramer looks 
wow. I mean, he looked incredibly Incredible, smooth on yes. this log jump. Quentin Bosch, in my mind, looks pretty good as well, but I'd love to get feedback from the riders. City Water here, Pro Ski Grand Prix. We've got a massive 16-minute moto plus a lap. This is third of four motos they got to go through today. Well, they, gotta, they still have plenty of time in the moto. You know, this. I mean, Kramer's got more, you know, more time to work. And, of course, Jeremy's got time to try to catch up with Kramer. So, you know, just hope, hopefully time has not run out. So both Chris Cl McCluggage uh, and Rutger Beersman say that QB1, in their opinion, are do he's definitely handling this log jump with the most expertise. Perfectly, Just watched yeah. Cole Kramer go through. He does Perfectly look solid done, yeah. as well. Guys, thanks for the feedback. Oh, and Billy Bates goes, Quentin most definitely is handling that log jump best. You guys, thanks for the feedback. Uh, Yazir Korchi saying that Quentin Bosch and Pere looking solid over the log jump. We appreciate you guys tons for uh, giving us your feedback. You're watching Pro Ski Grand Prix, and right now, Quentin Bosch leading, Cole Kramer second, Jeremy Pere in third, and boat number 50, Michael Pere in fourth, Anders Keller's fifth, and uh, Kevin Redder has got to be pushing right now. He's in sixth, Harley Ritchie in seventh. Well, this is motor number three action right here. So far with 120 points, full package right now is Quentin Bosch right there, number 98. Yeah, Quinn Bosch has looked so solid the last couple of days. And just watching him walk around on the beach, he has seemed very, very relaxed. And that, I think, also translates immediately onto the water when you're able to be pretty chill. He has achieved every goal that he wanted. He won the World Series. He's won every one of the top races around the world. Right now, he just wants to continue to extend that legend. And uh, what an incredible job. That boat, by the way, is built by him and his mechanics. And he says, I put a lot of effort and attention to detail into these boats. So since he's won all those trophies, Don, right? Yeah. Now he's on a quest just to collect. He's on a co he's collecting now. Well, now you got to imagine. Um, to to his point, he's he's also building a business. Quentin Bosch has helped a ton of other riders. In fact, you're going to see this throughout the week. The QB one sign on a lot of the, these different boats. It's because Quentin not only is he an amazing racer, but he's also one heck of a supporter of a lot of other riders, including the young lady we watched just a little while ago, Emma Nelly Orton. Emma, okay. And don't forget today, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. right here Pacific time or Arizona time. Yeah. Don't forget to uh, check out that we are going live all over the world. Yeah, so by the way, guys, I just want to give you pre-warning as the white flag comes out. This afternoon might be a tad bit frustrating on the live stream. Bear with us. We have to follow the satellite uplink. So we have no choice but to break when they tell us to, whether it's in the so middle bear of a with race. Us. So right. bear with us. If it's in the middle of a race, we have to break to go to that satellite uplink. All of that is to uh, help increase the sport's visibility. So please have patience with us if we break away at a critical moment. And don't forget, if, you're, um, if you are wondering, you know, where, you know, if you're overseas and you don't know where to check us out at, just go into our website, WGP1.com. We have all the information there of uh, what channels to look for. Yep, and we're continuing the domination here from this white flag. That's Quentin Bosch. You're walking, uh, we're walking away was what I was trying to say. Uh, he is just coming in to the uh, split section. And you can see how tight that is. He comes very quick to the outside splits. Got a lot of traffic. Quentin Bosch, no problem. His nickname, QB1, for a reason. Well, approaching now into the final option on the outside line. <laughs> Estelle Perret says she thinks Michael Perret is best on the log jump. <laughs> I love you, Estelle. All right. Quentin Here it Bosch. is on the final turn for Quentin Bosch from Germ and from Belgium. Yep, Quentin Bosch takes the win. This is the third moto for him, and Belgium bringing it home with this young man, QB1, Cole Kramer, right behind him for a second, riding for the USA. And that's how it looks on the top two for the Pro Ski Grand Prix Moto Three of Four. Well, don't forget uh, Jeremy Perret, Don in third position just came in. Yep, Jeremy Perret, and we should be looking for uh, Michael Perret, and of course uh, Keller, Anders Keller, and Kevin Redder. And once, and once again, I just noticed that uh, Quinn Bosch, so far, perfect game. So uh, you remember how we talked earlier that hat -trick. ha a hat trick is already hard to do? Yeah. 
now he's got one more motor to go. Now let's let's talk about that for just a second. It's hard enough to do a hat trick at the World Finals. Exactly. Like there's under probably a hundred people. Yeah. I would very- say in, over 45 years, maybe we've got maybe 150 have ever pulled a hat trick, and I may be underselling that. But Quentin Bosch to do that in this class is insane. insane. That's right. It's insane. And if he can do it again one more in four motos, that's just. He's crazy. Unbelievable. I got to do a shout out for Harley Ritchie. I agree. The live streams lighten up for him. This was a gentleman that, I mean, he was hurting unit yesterday. Sore ribs. I would say probably had a teeny tiny concussion. He was pretty sore in the face as well. He took a massive face plant over that log jump, and he was back out racing and in top 10. Harley Ritchie, you are awesome. Well, Don, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back uh, for our next category, the Grand Master Ski, right after these messages. WGP1 Water Jet World Series Season 2023 is coming. Round 1, May at Mekalinki, Poland. Round 2, July at Vichy, France. Round 3, October at Lake Havasu City, USA. And final round, December at Pattaya City, Thailand. Supported by Sports Authority of Thailand, National Sports Development Fund, Amazing Thailand. Jet Tribe. SBT is really your one-stop shop for all things personal watercraft. As someone with a small fleet of stand-up jet skis, I love that SBT has all the parts that I could possibly need to keep them running so that I can keep doing what I love. Jet Tribe. All right, we're back. Welcome to the uh, WGP. One Water Jet World Series round three right here in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, and we are wasting no time in Grand Master Ski on the pole position. Oh, I'm so sorry. I lied to you. It's a Pro Am runabout stock. We actually are looking for our sheets for race number eight. We'll be right back. Meanwhile, well, this is the Pro Runabout 1100 Open category. So bear with us. We'll be right back with the information for you. All right, on the line, uh, Super Top Foot Raccoon and Kasadi Terra Pratip in a red flag. So we've got time to uh, grab that sheet for you and get you up to date. All right, we got a red flag. We're going to restart this uh, moto.
Once again, we're just about to restart the Pro Runabout 1100 Open category here. And if you're just tuning in on our live feed, welcome to our Facebook and YouTube for the WGP1 Watershed World Series round number three, 2023, right here in Lake Havasu, Arizona in the United States. Our round number one was uh, held at Mehaliki, Poland. Round number two was in Vichy, France. And we're going to finish up the final round or round number four in uh, Thailand. You know, Don, that was a great work to find that information for us. <laughs> and when he says find, he means I just ran. <laughs> Literally. Yep. Well, I'm going to have to get in better shape. All right, Super Top Fu Raccoon, um, boat number 45. Uh-oh, is that Louis Behezen that got called with a... Well, jump start. No. Tough break. All right, so uh, Super Top Fu Raccoon is going to have to start with a dead engine. Actually, I think it is uh, Super Tot. Yep, it is. You're right. Super Tot put the good. Boat number nine, that's a Corey Dixon right next to him. All right, this is motor number, number two action here. We're going to do about three more categories before, before we take a... Yep, that's Valentina Lascana actually on the outside. Uh, Kasadi Terapratip is going to be on the pole position on the outside. Next to him, Louis Vahizen. On the inside, it's going to be Super Top Foot Raccoon, but unfortunately, it's going to hurt him on that start. So Corey Dixon is going to have clean water. Well, Don, it's not going to hurt him too bad because he, he's already out there How into the whole shot. How did that happen? How did that happen? That's right. Wow. Okay, Super <laughs> Top. I couldn't even I couldn't even say Corey Dixon before that came out. All right, Super Top Food Raccoon. It's not uh, Super Top. It's Super Top. Super, super <laughs> fast. Super quick on the throttle. Oh, is that our girl, Valentina Lascana? Let's see. Right, let's 176. See. All right, we got a green flag. Who's out there? Who's super that? Super Top Food Raccoon with the whole shot. There it is, number 45 from Whole Thailand. throttle, whole shot. And that is going to be Valentina Lascana in second. All right, motor number one, uh, the results. It was Super Top Foot Raccoon with the win, followed by Kasadi Terapratip and Louis Behezen rounding out your top three. Valentina Lascano actually uh, straight lined in uh, lap number 11, and unfortunately that put her back in point. She's back in fourth right now. Tough well, break for Valentina Lascano. So right now she's got a little redemption run. Well, this uh, category, we have three Thai riders in this one. <laughs> one Philippines, one Cambodian, and three U.S. riders going at it here. And you can see Louis Behezen at the top of the screen, guessing that he's gotten up in that top three as well. So there is Super Top Foot Raccoon. On the outside line of the option, Don. Now, Book, am I going to get in trouble if I call him Fat Boy? Because I see you doing that on the live well, stream, but <laughs> I'm not. Well, you that, may be able to say I don't that. Know, that's, that. That's his buddy. I don't, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know if I can get away with that. Mirda and also Jimmy Roberts saying, let's go, Valentina Lascana, and she is on the gas. That's Currently our, in second position, yep, riding for the United States. Yep, riding for uh, U.S. She's out of Miami, Nick. And uh, her and her brother, Juan Lascano, two of the nicest people. And their dad, uh, Sebastian, of course, mom, Candela, Kanda. And she is uh, just a beautiful family that we've got here. And she raises little Frenchies. And oh, the French, uh, French, French bulldogs, right? Frenchies, yeah, oh, little French really? bulldog. She had a little uh, French bulldog, Lola, down on the beach the other day. No less. Wait for it. Are you ready? In a shark outfit. Good Lord. Oh, yeah. Valentina's got a wicked sense of humor. <laughs> she, too, has a shark outfit that she does pictures in. you you, you got to see her social media page. Oh, speaking of social media, I think you should follow <laughs> us, Nick. you got to follow us at Jet Ski World Series. Jet Ski World Series. Except yeah. TikTok. That's at Jet Ski World, World Series. Series yep. 
You lost me for a minute there, Don. I did. I had I a saw blank. That. I was blanked. I didn't mean to blank you. No, oh, no. I, I, that was this little personal thing I was going through. <laughs> so follow us on social media, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, even TikTok, Jet Ski World Series. Don't forget our website, guys, WGP1.com. Check us out there. There's That's a, number 26 from the Philippines. Yep. Louis yep. Busian. Louis Bihizan. Number 45 still holding the lead from Thailand. Sumatat Futakrud. Followed by 176 in second position from the U.S. Valentina Lascano. And that is number nine just passing the tower. Is Corey Dixon from the U.S. Oh, man. I thought Corey was going to get that whole shot. In fact, I was calling that, that Corey was going to get that whole shot with uh, Supatak having to start with a dead engine. I don't think I've seen that good of a recovery from a dead engine start yet this week. So that was really, really well done. Maybe maybe Devin Farthing. Devin had a really good one, too. So anyway. So how many minutes are we doing here for the Pro Run about 1100 Open? Uh, don't put me on the spot here, but I think this is 17? 14. Is 14 no, no, 15? this one's shorter. It's shorter? just the big. That was the big Pro Run about Grand Prix. Uh, this one's going to be 14 plus a lap, I believe. I thought, uh, you know, personally, I thought it was 15. All right, I, I'll I'll follow your I'll follow your lead on. I don't that. know. I'm just asking you two. I can pull that sheet up, but I yeah. but I'm gonna have to go through digging. <laughs> <laughs> All right, K45. You know we'll just wait for the white flag. How's that? There you go. I'm not in a hurry. Number Are 33. You? Nope. I'm still here from Thailand. That's Arawat Lahib. Done. Another Thai rider. Arawat looking good up and Cruise, forth. He's that cruising through the inside line. Am I correct there? Of the option. So we've got, again, uh, Supatop, Foot Raccoon uh, leading, Valentina Lascano in second, and uh, boat number uh, 26. That is Louis Bahiz in, in third for the Philippines, and boat number 33 of Arawat Lahib. Uh, Arawat Lahib on that 33 is in fourth. All right, Supatad Boot Raccoon, race leader. And there he is, the uh, gentleman that rides for K44, K45, Maxima Team Paul, mm -hmm. uh, the manager of Reds of a Reds Halison, uh, two time IJSBA world champion. He's a two time World Cup champion and a Thai champion. And most recently, he was in an F2 rally in Thailand for rally driving. I had no idea Supatad uh, was a crossover artist as well. An impressive resume for the uh, gentleman that's only 31 years old. Supatat Foot Raccoon. He so, uh, Book, I'm not going to call him Fat Boy. You're going to have to do that. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Let's go Vale on the hunt. We all call him that here. Okay, if you do, I will. Princess Valentina up here in that uh, second place spot let's talk a little bit more about valentina Liscana, the lady that's riding up there in second she's got a world championship already has a highly uh, visible tiktok account we should get her to follow us she lives in miami florida she's 25 years fast and a dad put her to work in miami jet ski shop that's actually their family shop at the house and there well, is your race leader well you know what i got that's your, your race leader and i have the official top five right now give it to me well, number 45 of course that's on the screen your current leader as we are halfway through the motor right now 176 in second we have that right okay that is uh us's valentina lescano and number 26 is philippines louis busian and in fourth is number nine don Perfect. And in fifth is 3-3. Three, three. I'll tell you what, Lahib. And guess what I found out? What Number 142 is out of the race. Guess oh, the that, zero of a team. that puts um, Louis Behesen right up there. And that is oh, going to do another it. another one. Valentina, her crab is, oh. being, is that, is she being dragged in. Oh, yes, she is. Bummer. Valentina Lascana going in under a tow rope. That is the worst way. If you have to get an Uber to get back to your pits, nobody is a happy camper. So you know, that's the thing. I don't know if, it, if it's our fault for jinxing them. We it's just, you. You know, you know, we, it's you. I just I said think. her name. Yeah, I think it's you. It's a, oh, okay. No, I'm kidding. All right. All right. I don't want to talk to you anymore. All right, let's go. Custody, Tara Pratip <laughs> out. That's a heartbreaker for him. And uh, 176 Valentina Lascano now out as well. You're watching Pro Run about 1100. 
tough, tough, tough break. Well, it does change uh, the fates here yep. because uh, so, no change for Supatot, still leading. But so Louis Behiza now in second. second. Yep. And Number Arawat nine. Lahit is in third. Oh, I'm so sorry. Is Corey Dixon up in third? Yes. Let me check that then. My apologies. So 33. That's in uh, fourth. In fourth, yeah. All right, again, Supatot leading, but he's in second, Corey Dixon in third, and um, Arawat in fourth. Appreciate the update. We're correcting ourselves even. There it again. is right there. It was confirmed yep. right there on the screen. Second, second place, place, Louis. Louis Bouissant from the Philippines. Oh, Louis is such a sweetheart. He's an aspiring pilot, by the way. That boat was built by Dean's team. And his race number, that 2-6, that's actually his birthday. Uh, and he's got a cool uh, he's got a cool set of sponsors. Mark KLC Ventures and a Blue Catch Corporation, just some of his great sponsors. Oh. And he loves classical music. And this is a gentleman, by the way, I mentioned this earlier, but he won that round in uh, Vichy, France, and that was just a huge moment for Louis Vahisman. He's rides for the Philippines and a, a big part of the growth of the Philippines team and also for the visibility of the Philippines team globally. Well, he's working on the outside line in the option coming out right now is Louis Buisson from the Philippines. That is number 58 we see there on the screen. Who is that? Yeah, number uh, eight. 88 or 58. That's got to be hard to see there. If, uh, it looks like borrowed both. That's Arnold Martinez, actually. Arnold Martinez, the great Martinez. Or Arnold the Great, we call him that too. Arnold the Great. All right, we got a wide shot here of the race course for the Pro Runabout 1100 Open category here. Yeah, again. Your current leader is still number 25, Don. Yeah, and then uh, Louis Behees in second, Corey Dixon third, Laheep fourth. And uh, again, we've lost uh, two riders, so that would put Martinez, uh, Arnold Martinez in fifth, and Omut Sali is supposed to be out here, and I have not seen him. He should be in sixth, but well, he did break his boat in that first moto. Well, I can double check real quick, see where he is. Okay, get, yeah. get a little shot of. See if boat three is on the line. I did not see him in the lineup, so Omut might not have been able to get his boat fixed. So we have had a massive amount of attrition in the pro runabout class. Again, Corey Dixon, third. Behesen in second and uh, 58. Oh, no, no, no. That was 58. That is, guess it is, of a team. Oh, Cassidy was on a backup boat? Yes, that's oh. him. Oh. Well, that boat just broke, too. He's just having all kinds of day, isn't he? Yeah, he keeps breaking his toys. He needs to stop doing that. All right, so uh, Cassidy Terraprati was on the track on that backup boat, but unable to convert. And, uh, you know, he he was on a barred boat, but the thing is he was never on the top five at all. Right. So, again, Supatot Foot Raccoon, boat number 45, your race leader, and uh, should be getting a white flag pretty quick. But, man, this has been a battle of attrition. Valentina Lascano falling victim to that, as well as uh, Cassidy Terraprati and Omut Sali between these last two motos. So we've lost three boats. And uh, that's a huge break for Casadi Terapratip. He was in second coming into this second moto, and Valentina Lascano was in fourth. So really hard on the points for these guys. They're no stranger to that, though. You have a tendency well, to see that you know at what? the Worlds. But the most important position right now is that number 45 right there. Coming in for moto number two, he's still holding strong in the first, coming out into the or coming into the option here i mean if he can collect 60 more points oh he's going to be sitting pretty here for the the final moto yep super top foot raccoon aka fat boy uh, again rides for a k45 maxima team he's a bronze medalist at the asian games in 2018 and runabout endurance which was a huge huge deal for uh thailand Again, he's also a rally driver and a guy that loves rock climbing. Don, it's the final lap here for the Pro Run about 1100 Open. Right. Still holding strong there, number 45. Yeah, he's looked solid, but you know, Super Top Fruit Raccoon has had multiple podiums out at the World Finals. He's just a great 
racer. And uh, again, he's got Dean's team helping him as out as well. And uh, Dean Cherrier, uh, shout out to Dean Cherrier and that entire team of riders. 25 years of racing. Okay. So again, we are watching the final lap for Pro Run about 1100. And this Dean's team supported boat is looking good. And you can see that K45 Super Tot just bringing it back a smidge, taking it down a notch, cruising through that outside split. He's not under pressure right now, Ian. Well, you know, you, know, you shouldn't, if you're not under that much of a pressure, you shouldn't press it. You shouldn't push it, right? No, you shouldn't. You want and, a resource. And, and you want and to the position the that you're in. Yeah. Yeah, you want to just make sure you get that thing in, in the finish line. I think the, the key here, Nick, and that's a great point, manage your resources. We talked about that a lot, and that's what he's doing. He's not on the throttle. He knows where he's at. Super top foot raccoon taking the win in moto number two, and that gives him the perfect position to set it up for moto three. He's taking that's two right. wins now. Another uh, moto for Thailand here coming in for another 60 points. You have to go one more moto for the championship moto later on in the day. Back up to the lineup next is going to be Pro Ski Women Grand Prix. And Louis Behesen will take second. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm out of line here. Next We're doing up is Grand the Grand Master, Master, Master Ski. Ski. That is up. Right there, that's your schedule on, the, uh, on your screen there. We've got two more to go before we take that break. we got the Grand Master Ski, and then we have the Pro Ski Women Grand Prix. All right, this is going to be uh, race number nine, Grandmaster Ski. Sorry about that. We got sheets all over the place. Boat number 35 is going to be on the uh, inside pole position. We'll get you that in just a minute. All right, that is number 26 done from the Philippines. Louis Puisan coming in here. As we clear the race course once again and prepare for our next race or next category will be the Grand Master Ski. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. WGP1 Water Jet World Series Season 2023 is coming. Round 1, May at Mekalinki, Poland. Round 2, July at Vichy, France. Round 3, October at Lake Havasu City, USA. And final round, December at Katia City, Thailand. Supported by Sports Authority of Thailand, National Sports Development Fund, Amazing Thailand. Jet Tribe. SBT is really your one-stop shop for all things personal watercraft. As someone with a small fleet of stand-up jet skis, I love that SBT has all the parts that I could possibly need to keep them running so that I can keep doing what I love. Jet Tribe. Hey, 
guys. Welcome back to the WGP Water Jet World Series round number three. And it looks like we are underway with Grandmaster Ski. And I will uh, get you the rundown here. But we did have a write-in on this one. It was um, Mike Remar and Mike Klippenstein in the middle of this as well. And this is going to be our first moto. Charlie Martinez is out on the water. Greg Matta, Tim O'Neill, Brian Snyder, Michael Williams, Albert Anderson, Kevin Pope. Jonathan Levy, Yukiko Kame, all the way from Japan. And again, Mike Remar and Mike Klippenstein also well, in this Grandmaster Ski. Well, Don, this uh, category, the Grandmaster Ski, we're doing a total of three motos. All right, one, the first moto will be held you know, for the first part of the morning, and then the two more later on this afternoon. Yeah, it looks like Mike Klippenstein took the whole shot on that, and he is currently leading the uh, most celebrated jet ski racer in Canada, Mike Klippenstein, and also with a redunculous amount of world titles. Mike Klippenstein actually was a last-minute add-on, and he's on the 212 boat. All right, working the way out of the option area here for the Grandmaster Ski. 365. That is Japan's Yukiko Kume. Aw, it's great to have Yuki Kume, uh, Yukiko out here. I'm going to let him run for about another lap, Don, and I'll give you an update on your positions officially. All right, I think it's Yukiko in second and Greg Matta in third. I made that up, though. Don't, oh, that's okay, don't Don. Don't quote me. But Let's see. Mike you, you've been right so far <laughs> well, on all your calls. I don't know. You nailed me yesterday. I made a bunch of mistakes <laughs> yesterday because I kept looking at the live timing. Uh, it is showing Pope up in third on the live timing, so that also could be a uh, third place. There's 2-1-2. Two, two. Is that Mike there? there? Yeah, no, Mike Levenstein. Mm -hmm. Mike Levenstein's no, got three, that 2 five. I'm sorry. That's uh, Yukiko Kume, 3-6-5. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, Mike's in first, right? Yeah, Mike okay. had 25 uh, world championship titles. Uh, he has also been responsible for the WCWA, which is the uh, Western Canadian uh, Watercross. 25. 25? He told me he had 12. Real yeah. Mike Klippenstein? No, I was just kidding. See? Yeah, yeah I was just going to say, <laughs> Mike told you that? Because no, no. Now he's got, he's practiced, I think he's got 26 now, but uh, on the sheets it's showing 24 world titles. One of the most decorated uh, Canadian riders. A little backup, too, on Mike will tell me. Remind me to ask, remind me to tell you more on Mike Klebestein in just a second. All right, number 56 uh, right there on the screen. That's from Great Britain's Kevin Pope. Is that our third place rider? That could be, All and right. he is riding in uh, Jet Ski World Port Talbot LTD. I believe it is. That's Kevin Pope. So we've got uh, Mike Klempenstein leading and Yukiko Kame in second and uh, Kevin Pope in third. And looks like uh, Levy in fourth, Martinez in fifth, and Anderson in sixth, Snyder seventh, Remar in eighth. Unofficial, by the way. There's Jonathan Levy, your fourth place rider. Yeah, Mad Dog was uh, last uh, showing on the sheet, so not sure what happened. All right, again, uh, we are watching the Grandmaster Ski, and since you asked, I'll go ahead and uh, share with you. We actually have a, um, a hero out on the water. Mike Klippenstein was in a situation several years ago where he was out on um, um, some snowmobiles out by uh, Fort Mac in Canada and um, in an area that he likes to snowmobile ride there was a, a bad accident and uh, one of the snowmobilers recreational snowmobilers was lost and the search and rescue team in Canada actually came in and gave up on them. They weren't going to search anymore for the individual that was lost and Mike Klippenstein actually took his snowmobile out found the lost rider uh, in the snowmobile and brought him back. And had he not done that, that gentleman would have lost his life. So wow. Mike Klippenstein, truly a hero. Yeah, great story behind that. Uh, you're looking at, uh, that looks like number, number nine. nine. Yeah, number nine. That's, That's Charlie. Charlie. Did we just do that in sync? Charlie Mentinas <laughs> on the water. Nick is multitasking right now, so not only am I talking in his ear, but everybody else is. Uh, by the way, you can follow the live timing, guys. You'll be up to date faster even than I will. But Mike Klippenstein leading, uh, Yukiko Kame in second, and Kevin Pope in third. 
Levy All fourth, right. Martinez fifth. What are your officials? Well, I just got it in my ear. <laughs> 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 well, on the screen, that's right. One, one, three there. Is that him? Two, one, two, actually. Two, one, two. Okay, well, the, that's your leader right now. It's two, one, two. Okay. But three, six, five is in second. Did you get that one? Yukiko Kome. Okay. What about the 56? He's in third. Yeah, okay, so that is Kevin Pope. And one, five, six is in fourth. That's you Levy. That? Mm -hmm. Jonathan Levy. And rounding off the top five would be Charlie U.S. Martinez. Charlie. Oh. You, did you get that? Yeah. See, like I told you, you always got it right the first time. Well, I'm just getting lucky right now. Mike Remar has moved up into sixth place on the... Number two boat, and H. Anderson has uh, moved up into seventh. That's Albert Anderson. Schneider is an eighth, and o Williams in ninth. Matt is still back in the back. And there's your race leader, Mike Klippenstein. All right, he should be on the right side of the course here. Got a chance to see his son out on uh, the grounds of Lake Havasu City this weekend, Cohen. Uh, just an amazing young man. And hopefully we'll get him jet ski racing next year. He indicated he might want to come back and come do some racing. So hopefully we'll see Mike Klippenstein's son hit the water next year. All right, heading towards the back stretch of the course here for the Grand Master Ski category. And this boy Still holding uh, the lead is Mike Klippenstein. Uh, yeah, this boy sure does know how to ride a boat. He's not only a great racer, he's an amazing mechanic as well. Mike Klippenstein. He has raced in almost every class, Pro Ski, Pro Ski GP, Pro Ski Mods, uh, all that. And he's no youngster. He's over 40, but just an amazing, what amazing gentleman. What do you mean he's over 40? Do we, you try to say that he's old? Well, I mean, don't you get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you said he's over 40. Why? Is this is how Don gets run over by a truck. <laughs> That's how that starts, by saying Mike Klippenstein is old. I think I'm not going to do that. Uh, by the way, this gentleman that you're watching, Klippenstein, he's, also, he's competed in every discipline. He has won titles in runabout. He's run ti won titles in stand-up. Wait for it as the white flag comes out. He has also won titles, wait, as a freestyler. Oh, really? I am not oh, lying. Well, you know what? As long you know, as long as he can tell you, I've done it all. I mean, I've done that, right? Been there, done that. Yeah. Oh, and I lied to you. I said twenty-four world titles, and I just got corrected. He has thirty-three. I knew it was a ridiculous number. Thank you, guys. Uh, get her done, Mike Remar from Gordon Horn, and uh, Kay Nordman. Uh, Clipper is a solid human. Rescued you on the water when you broke your leg. Kay, I didn't know that. That's a great story as well. Lenny Phillips Osborne saying, let's go, Mike Remar. Well, uh, anyway, however way you want to slice it, he is an incredible human being. I just couldn't happen to a cooler guy. Mike Klippenstein smoking it on uh, this final half lap. A, half a lap left, Don. Half a lap for the Grand Master Ski category. Coming in towards the final option area here of the WGP water jet. World Series, round number three right here in Lake Hawazu, Arizona. And he's just going to cruise it through on the outside split, no dramas. And you can see he's relaxing when he's got that upright stance. He is in, in he's all physical. Not a lot of finesse and grace. Mike Klippenstein is just brawn, brute force, and the amazing racer. And he has got the endurance of a 12-year-old. I've well, I never mean, seen anybody ride From like start to finish. Holding the entire field off, taking the checkered flag is Mike Klippenstein. And that's two, one, two. Going to be the win for that first moto. It's a young man from Canada, Mike Klippenstein, who lives in the U.S. now, I heard. Well, um, they just got the word a little bit here, Don, that um, after the break, right, uh, we're going to do a countdown. If you want to stay, if you want to, you know, stay with us Ooh. on our live feed. Okay. We're going to leave it uh, open so Ooh. you can get a chance to see the freestyle. freestyle. Aren't you so, awesome? Uh, All right. So, because I got to tell you, I had a lot of people fired up yesterday because they couldn't watch freestyle because freestyle is a big deal. But you know what? You should be here. You should be here. There's no excuse to not come out and watch Freestyle it's, Live. Exactly. Nothing beats it, and it's, that. It's a good, it's, the weather's beautiful. That's right. right? I'm inviting you yeah. personally. Just come on out. You there. know what? I don't know. what. If, if you're in the area, right? <laughs> if you're in the area, you're sitting in the air conditioning watching 
the freestyle. Come on, get out here. Come on. Put if on your shorts. If you're in the air conditioning in Great Britain, get a ticket. Get. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> you, know, put, you know, put on your shorts. You know, get out here. Kieran Smith saying, talking older, dude. Remar's 55. Oh, way to call him out. I <laughs> loved that one. Well, Kieran there. Smith just called Remar out. That's awesome. Okay. 55 years fast for Mike Remar. Well, we, you know, you and I don't want to talk about age right now, Don. Oh, my gosh. Ryan Rasmussen said he's as tall as a 12-year-old also. <laughs> talking about Mike Klippenstein. <laughs> Ryan, you're going to get me in trouble. Oh, that's fantastic. Great job for Mike Klippenstein. Uh, we're on to uh, Pro Ski uh, Women Grand Prix. And on the pole position, well, we'll talk about that when we get a chance to look well, at them. We're in motor number two for our next one. As the course is cleared out. Yep, uh, ready for the Pro Ski Women Grand Prix, motor number two. Yep, I think we're taking just a minor moment to uh, fix the course. There is Adjusting a discrepancy on yeah, that yeah. inside split. So they're... I noticed them working on that, and I guarantee you over the break I would watch that inside split because I am noticing that the course marshal has been making a lot of adjustments on that. So we'll see if they well, get maybe, it even faster. Ooh. Well, maybe they can adjust it closer. <laughs> what? You, uh, your eye's getting old or what? <laughs> Boat number 98. That is not Quentin Bosch. That is the lovely Emily Ortendahl, but she is aboard uh, Fast Power Sports Boat. And by the way, she also rides the 9-8. And, uh, next door, who's that? Next door is boat number 23. That's River Varner. Now, both, both these boats are lining up on the inside. 98 has the pole position. The triple sevens, that's Anna Glennon. Little social media star and ingenue. And then we've got uh, more le young ladies on the outside. And uh, Jet Girl getting ready. And there is Ooh, boat number Lou eight. Gilead. And that is uh, Lou Dartalot. Yeah, Lou riding for France, and she's on the outside, outside, and right next to her is Reese Geis on the 141, and then the young lady that is on the pole position on the inside, that is Yasmin Eprous. Well, we are off into the whole shot for the pro, uh, pro Ski Women Grand Prix, Don. Yeah, and looks like Reese Geis looking very good on the start, and Yasmin Eprous as well. Meanwhile, inside split, it is all about that little tennis ball helmet and Manelli Ortendahl. <laughs> well, Emma has 60 points as of motor number one. Does Let's it, see how well she'll do here. Doesn't she look gorgeous out on the water? This young lady rides with so much finesse. And Yasmin Eprous from Estonia on the outside. And this is going to be a battle, epic proportions between Yasmin Eprous and Emanelli Ortendahl. Well, Yasmin has uh, 53. She's currently overall in second in points standing-wise. We got a green flag, and it's a go here for yep. the... Pro Ski Women Grand Prix. Eminelli Ortendahl with a whole shot, followed by Yasmin Eprous. And I think that was Anna Glennon up in third. And Emma just going like a rock star. Oh, actually, that's River Varner. And Reese Geis is off her boat. You can see that off just at one, the, four, one. Of the screen. Lou Dartalot coming through in fourth. And uh, Jet Girl, that's Anna Glennon in fifth. And Reese Geis. Unfortunately, got tangled up on that start, and she is having to give it an Uber back to her boat. Well, let's just hope she get back in the race quickly here. Yeah, because she was up in points. Reese Geis was in fourth coming into this. So, again, Emanelli Ortendahl leading both in points and on the track. Yasmin Eprous uh, right behind her and second, leading in, in second place in points and second on the track. And River Varner, third in points third on the track. That's how it lays out right now. There's Imanelli Ortendahl. Beautiful run. For All right. There Anna. is, uh, I do have an official order in the position here, Don. Talk to me. I'm going to talk to you right now about it. Number 98, of course. She is still the lead. That's Emma Nelly. Number 64 belongs to Yasmin from Estonia. And she's in second. And in third is number 23. That is River Varner. And in fourth is number eight is Lou Deliot from France. Yeah. And rounding off the top five is triple seven from the U.S., Anna Glennon. So Do that's you your official standings right now. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but these girls are catching the Havanami. And that I talked about, that ferry went through. And as you can see, some of those waves have that sleeper wave in the middle of it. And uh, Yasmin Eprous just found it and popped some massive air. You're watching River Varner. In third position from the United States. And if you're just tuning in, uh, welcome to the WGP number one Waterjet World Series round number three right here in Lake Havazoo, Arizona. We are live in the United States. 
So uh, yeah, beautiful afternoon as uh, we get into a big set of motos. Could be, I think this is our final race before a quick break. Before a quick break, yes. Okay. But like I said, we are, you know you and I will take a quick break, but we're going to leave it on for people that like to see the freestyle. Yeah, so don't go away. You'll be able to yeah. watch the uh, pro freestyle on the water. We're going to leave that live for you. That's and right. Mark Sickerlein, I hope you're listening in and he doesn't shoot me. I'll message him. Mark, by the way, a multiple world champion from Germany in freestyle and actually a huge innovator in freestyle as well. Was on the live stream with us yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Really enjoyed having him on there with us. Emma Nelly Ortendahl, young lady that's in the lead. Uh, she is a two-time Swedish champion and a eight-time world champion and a European champion as well. And she is also a sailor. She is learning and getting her certification in sailing. And that's the uh, young lady that you're watching uh, in the lead. She also was a big support of the uh, Norwegian championships that happened just a, a couple of weeks ago. And it was her involvement uh, getting the shirts and getting sponsors and uh, doing so much behind the scenes on the race and the Borgstrom girls were uh, helping her and Hawk and Borgstrom that whole entire family put on the uh, Norwegian championships along with the Johansson family as well huge shout out to Emma Nelly Ortendahl for all of her hard work both on the course but also as a major ambassador off the course well right now she's holding pretty strong here in the moto coming in towards the option once again motor number two looking pretty good for her and Manelli Orthodol. Let me take this opportunity to thank our sponsors real quick. IJSBA, SBT, Short Block Technologies, Yamaha, Kawasaki, Sea-Doo, Reba Racing, Blosion, Solus, Solus, Anderson Power Sports, Commander, Ride Now, and VP Racing. And in second position, Yasin Yaprus is right there from Estonia. Yeah, and I just had a, a question off the mic, so I'll share that uh, with you guys as well. Uh, we are going to be all of this live action you can see on the live stream, so be sure and share that link out. I'll share the link as well on our stream, but go straight. This is why you have to follow. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Got to come to Facebook, Jet Ski World Series. You can see the live link right there. You just click in it. Uh, YouTube, the same, Jet Ski World Series. Instagram? Jet Ski World Series. Well, look, it's so similar. TikTok? At Jet Ski World Series. Don't forget the ad. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, at Jet Ski, at yeah. Jet Ski World yeah. Series. Now, what about the website? Uh, the website is uh, www.jetski slash world series.com. .com. Now, listen, if you want to please share this link uh, with your friends and buddies so that we can get that link out there, but it, those links are all on any one of those social pages for you. They do an amazing job with that. And if you're watching River Varner. Go ahead, and we sir. do have another. Uh, Link is uh, WGP1.com also, so oh, you can check you. those out. Maybe you can get a better information on that. You know, it's, it's nice. It's shorter. Oh. WGP1.com. WGP1.com. So, yeah, Bob, Eminelli right now is on a uh, go fast, uh, a fast power sports, not go fast, a fast power sports boat. She actually switched over to a fast power sports boat, and that's what she's racing this weekend. And uh, River Varner, you're watching. I, I'm not sure. I don't want to. I don't want to say what boat she says, so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> I'll find out for you. But you are watching uh, River Varner, who is back in uh, third, and Yasmin Eprouse in second, and uh, Emanelli Ortendahl is leading, and River Varner on a boat number 23. Uh, rocking. Uh, thank you guys for listening on the live uh, stream. Jersey J in the house. Great to have you, man. It's been a minute, huh? Appreciate you being on the stream. And you were watching uh, River Varner, River uh, Born and Raised in Riverside, California. Hey, GJ Whitaker. Gosh, I miss you, Gary. Gary listening in all the way from the Cayman Islands. Uh, Gary's been out to the World Finals as well as the Siwa team. That's the Cayman Islands Watercraft Association. And, man, those guys put on some amazing races down in the Cayman Islands. Wish you were here, Gary. Appreciate you joining us on the live stream. And, and congratulations and a huge acknowledgement to you and uh, all of the different teams that put together some great racing down in the Cayman Islands and keeping jet ski racing alive around the world. We appreciate you, my friend. Hey, Vicki Gregory, all the way from uh, the U.K. She said it's been really... Uh, 
Was it pretty out there for you? It's gorgeous here today. It's going to be up over 100 degrees. You're watching him and Ellie Orton all. Well, I don't feel it's like it's 100. I'm feel, it's pretty good right now. Well, it's pretty cool. Well, we're yeah. in the shade, so that helps. Also, it's the morning. Yeah, I think mean, yesterday was pretty hot. That's true. It was pretty smoking hot yesterday. All right, she's on a fast power sports boat, and she is fast. Emma Nelly Ortendahl leading pro women's ski Grand Prix. She took the win in the first moto, and uh, she's dominating in moto number two as well. Again, watching Pro Ski Women at Grand Prix, and Evan Ellie Ortendahl has been the tour de force on this one. Took the win in Moto 1. It was Yasmin Eprouse in second in that first Moto, River Varner in third, and Reese Geis in fourth. Reese Geis actually went down in Moto number two, so she's going to have to do some makeup. Okay. Now, we are stepping away from uh, racing after this, and we're going to be going to pro freestyle. Mark Sikaline will be very happy to note that uh, we are going to be broadcasting that. We're only going to do commentary on it for part of that, part of it, yes. but we will leave it live for you, and that is at special request because, as you know, we have got a ton of production people, and we got to get all those production people Be well. fed. Yes. So, because we've got a huge day this afternoon. We've got 27 races we've got to cover on the live stream, and there is a stupid amount of logistics that we're going to well, have to handle well, the thing is they, with they, the satellite. Exactly, and they told me if, if, you know, if, if the freestyle cuts out anytime soon, that means that they're trying to get the signal for the live broadcast, the satellite. Yeah, okay. So we're going to try to leave it on as, as much as possible. Wow, okay, we will do our very best to get you as much of that pro freestyle as possible. And uh, what I will do is make sure that I've got the results on pro freestyle, and yes. I will get you that either way at yeah. the end when we come back. I'll get that yes. to you. So, Mark, we'll try to take care of you, my friend, and all the rest of the people that want to watch freestyle. Uh, Jason Crystal, I hope you do come back. We miss you. We'll send everybody the, our love as well for the boathouse. We love you guys. Don, this is a final lap here for the Pro Ski Women Grand Prix. Number 98, looking looking pretty yeah from sweden this lady is um, such a legend i've had the privilege of watching emanelli ortendahl and she is got the heart of a warrior but such a big soul like when she walks into a room you can feel her presence but she's powerful in a quiet way um in sweden they have and i'm not going to say it right but they have this cultural attitude of it's about all of us, not one person individually. And so they, you see a lot of teamwork from Sweden and actually from the Scandinavian countries, and that's why they really don't like to put themselves forward. Uh -huh. They really believe in the team and supporting each other. And I just love that attitude, and, and she truly is the perfect representation of that type of ambassadorship. Well, that's good. That's good to hear. You know, it, it, it's good to hear that she's giving back. She does. Yeah. yeah, she does a tremendous amount for the community and a lot of appearances. Her and the Borgstrom sisters as well, Yana and Sophie. And uh, actually, Sophie was supposed to be in this class this weekend. I'm not sure. But she had double wrist surgery. Uh, Sophie Borgstrom, fantastic racer, but uh, and also from Sweden. Well, right. approaching the final turns, Don, okay. for this one, the Pro Ski Women Grand Prix, number 98. Should be take another checkered flag with another 60 points. So far, a perfect game. Yeah. Eminelli Ortendahl with the win in moto number two, riding for Sweden. Congratulations to this young lady. You, you will have to wait till after uh, the second half of the competition. Yep, that's going to be Yasmin e. Krauss in second. That's right, to see if she will take officially take the world championship for the Pro Ski uh, Women Grand Prix. And uh, River Varner is going to round out your top three. Well, that is going to be a wrap for the second set of motos for the uh, Pro Ski Women Grand Prix. And we will be going to some pro freestyle next. All righty, as we clear out the 
waiting for the crafts to come in here, clear out the course. We're going to do the freestyle next for round number three. In the meantime, let's go ahead and thank our sponsor once more before we get started with the freestyle. IJSBA, SPT or Short Block Technologies. We have Yamaha, Kawasaki, Sea-Doo, Reva Racing, Blosion, Solus, Anderson Power Sports, Commander, Ride Now, and VP Racing. And uh, don't forget to follow us on the uh, online www.jetski/worldseries.com or wgp1.com. And uh, don't forget, go ahead and like, share. And subscribe to our social media platforms, Facebook, Jet Ski World Series, YouTube, Jet Ski World Series, Instagram, Jet Ski World Series, and, of course, TikTok, at Jet Ski World Series. Yesterday's freestyle was very exciting. All right, we're going to, it's going to take a few seconds just to organize the riders real quickly for the uh, freestyle. But in the meantime, we're going to take a short break and then we're going to be back with the freestyle for you. So sit back, relax, and we'll be right back. WGP1 Water Jet World Series Season 2023 is coming. Round 1, May at Mechalinki, Poland. Round 2, July at Vichy, France. Round 3, October at Lake Havasu City, USA. And final round, December at Tatia City, Thailand. Supported by Sports Authority of Thailand, National Sports Development Fund, Amazing Thailand. Jet Tribe. SBT is really your one-stop shop for all things personal watercraft. As someone with a small fleet of stand-up jet skis, I love that SBT has all the parts that I could possibly need to keep them running so that I can keep doing what I love. Jet Tribe. All 
All right, we're still uh, waiting for the riders to get ready here on the water for our pro free freestyle here. Yeah. Um, we're gonna leave. We're gonna leave the feed. Uh, we're gonna leave the feed on. Okay. But they're telling me that we're gonna take a quick, you know, quick break. But we're gonna count down for you. So when the guys are ready, okay. then we can be back here for the, oh, for the freestyle. Well, real quick, do you want me to give the results up sure, to this sure, moment? Sure, sure, yep, yep. Okay, well, let me go ahead and give you the results up until today. And then after that, we're going to take a quick break, but we will leave the live feed going. So right now, in uh, 11th place, Demi Morgan. And in 10th place, it's Bader Abdullah. In 9th place, Jack Ziegler. In 7th place, Kyle Krieger. In 8th place, Jason Wright. In sixth place, Niels Vellums. In fifth place, Brad Turnbloom. In, er, let's see, in fourth place, Gabe Jukas. And in, in third is Yaji Tahi Yamamoto. And here's your top two, Jukas Nolan and Mark Gomez. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how it stands as we get ready to go for our final round. All right, we're going to be right back, but we're going to keep the feet on for you. So check the, uh, the countdown.
Oh, that doesn't look good. They've got somebody underneath the hood trying to help out uh, Bader Al Abdullah. Uh, rising for uh, Qatar. And uh, right now, Bader is in 10th place after two rounds. Uh, they had a round yesterday afternoon during the lunch break. That's one of the biggest features of the world finals. We have people from all over come down on the beach to watch this. And then we had a expression session last night underneath the london bridge and that was about a minute each for each competitor and there was over 5,000 people there last night watching that competition and bader al abdullah making his way to the water You are uh, watching Bader Al Abdullah, the beautiful flare out on that backflip. Think of that two in a row. Into a roll and then another uh, pair of backflips. Working very shallow on the beach. This is Bader Al Abdullah, your second competitor out of the gate. 11 riders here today. For all of you guys that are used to freestyle, you know this drill. It's two minutes, uh, and then at the 
15 minutes or 15 seconds at the end, they give them the horn. If they continue with a big combo, they're able to, of course, complete that combination for extra points. One handed lander there for Bader Alabula. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, Bader Abdullah going in very shallow water. That is the trick to doing freestyle at Lake Havasu City is you got to be shallow enough that all of the judges can see you, but deep enough to be able to perform some of these high degrees of technicality tricks. And sure enough, a triple backflip for Bader Abdullah. Our competitor from Qatar. That was a 360 that you saw in that final portion for uh, Bader Al Abdullah. Watching Pro Freestyle, this is the third and final round. All of these different rounds uh, added up for the overall results. And right now, your uh, top five, Mark Gomez, is in the lead. Nolan Jukish in second. Taji Yamamoto in third. Gabe Jukish in fourth. And Brad Turnbloom are your top five. Well, Don, in the pro freestyle uh, round number three, who are we uh, looking at? Who is the favorite here for motor number three? Well, I would have said Lee Stone, honestly. I would have said okay. Lee Stone and Mark Gomez are the two top. But um, what's been fascinating is the talents run very, very deep this year. Uh, Nolan Jukish has come on hard the last couple of years, and Taji Yamamoto is definitely going to be a threat. Uh, Gabe Jukish as well, and Brad Termlin, even Niels Vellums. Uh, Niels has been getting a ton of training from Mark Gomez over the past couple of years, and he too is going to be solid. Mark Gomez is leading in the points right now, and that's going to be a big one. But uh, Lee Stone retired and made a huge announcement. He had actually flown all the way over here to compete. He's won 10 world titles, and that was his big goal. Nobody else has done that in pro freestyle. And unfortunately, his shoulder is trashed enough that he wasn't able to compete this weekend. He's just going to retire. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, next is going to be uh, Jack Ziegler. Jack Ziegler uh, really lit up everybody last night on the competition underneath the London Bridge. Uh, all of it done at night, which makes it even harder for these guys to see. So uh, Jack Ziegler is the gentleman that is up next. And let's talk about Jack Ziegler's sponsors. He's sponsored by Tiger Craft, Team Jet Maniac, LPW Performance, HydroTurf, Freestyle Connection, and My Possible Foods. That's a pretty little view of the starting grid. And also you can see all of the crowds down there. They are packed down there watching freestyle. Well, this is the final uh, round of the freestyle. So we're going to get an opportunity to, to see who is champion here for this category. All right. So a, a roll plus a backflip for Jack Ziegler. 360 and a triple backflip. And sometimes on these flips, they actually travel out pretty far. Uh, higher degree of difficulty when they bring that back in. No, no hander on that 360. And then a barrel roll and a backflip. Right, you know what I like about Ziegler. this, though, Don? I, yes. like, I like to see the backflips. The backflips are yeah, very fun. That's, very good. Uh, 360. The yeah. There, that's what I like to watch. The yeah, couple barrel of roll. The combinations there. Barrel rolls and 360s do look a little similar. That was a double backflip, but a great combination. Uh, what they're judging on is uh, multiple things. They're looking for a diversity of tricks, like a different number of tricks. Yep. Obviously, the total number of tricks that you can do in two minutes. What about style? Uh, oh, most definitely style is included in the judging. Um, extensions, uh, showmanship, all of that is a part of the judging, and they have seven judges up there in the tower watching them. What about the difficulty? Uh, degree of difficulty is definitely rated. You know, like a double backflip obviously is going to have a ton more difficulty than a single backflip. Doing a double backflip inside of a combination will increase the difficulty even more. So, yes, difficulty a big factor. 
Traveling 360 is what they call that. Another back foot. The more, the more combinations they can pull off, the, the better the... Yeah, so um, it's, it's, it's transition. So you want super fast transitions between these tricks so that you are able to do these big combinations, which you're watching right now. Like 360, there's a pair of those, two back flips, three. But then see how that combination all flowed? All flowed yeah. That's what they want to see, and as many of those as possible. Yes. So, again, the idea here is to have as many number of tricks, but also that different tricks. They want different combinations. And it looks like uh, Kyle Krieger is going to be up next. And I'm sure they're looking at the, um, the finish also. If you finish uh, a combination with the, uh, what do you call it? If you're looking at like a, a perfect layout. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, so again, we have the horn comes out like 15 seconds before the completion of the two minutes. And it's a warning horn that tells them, hey, you've got, you know, one more opportunity one more. here. So you'll notice a lot of these pros, and they're very sharp about it. They'll start a combination. If you start that combination, uh, as soon as that horn hits, even though the final horn goes, your combination will count all the way through, and that is uh, an important factor. And it's pretty smart, I think, to. I mean, I mean, I've that. watched you know a couple of freestyle competition there, and and the thing is, sometimes you know when you when, when you pull up a nice combination, but at the end, you yeah. know, you, you fall off the craft. Yeah, well, now, if you lose the boat, you? how many costs yeah. would that cost you? Uh, it, it depends Usually, maybe on one or two? did you lose the boat completely or did you just have one hand come off the boat? And, and it, also, are you in oh, control? It takes consideration with all that. Yeah, you take all of those or deductions, either minor or major. Uh, Kyle Krieger is going to be up next. He's sponsored by Lee Stone Products, Freestyle Connection, HydroTurf, Jet Pilot, the Jet D Ski Clinic, Squid Moose, Elemental Covers. And 771, this is Kyle Krieger on the water. He's out of Lake Clark Shores, Florida. Just moved there from California. This guy's only 20 years old. He's a one-time freestyle title uh, in amateur freestyle in 2020. Uh, this is Kyle Krieger. And Kyle right now is third out of the water, and he is ninth on points. I love his boat, and I do believe that was Lee Stone's backup boat because he was having a hard time getting his boat started. See, so you got the inside tip there that he's actually borrowing Lee's ski. This was the ski that Lee was going to compete on. But, uh, yeah, they gave it to uh, Kyle Krieger because Lee's not going to compete. Lee has been, just has had his shoulder destroyed. I mean, he's been in so many surgeries trying to get that shoulder fixed. And it was hurting coming out here. And even last night you could tell he was in some pain. At yeah, the well, usually, usually when you get a, an operation on, you know, any ligaments, I mean, just for not, not this sport, any any other sport, it's just you know, and it, you know, it costs you ticking time. Yeah. it's a ticking time bomb. Yeah. You know it is when you've got. Uh, I mean, it could be football, basketball, you know, jet ski, whatever. Yeah. If you get a big injury, it's it can cost you. It really will. Yeah, it really will cost you. All right, so we're getting set up with a huge. Oh. He's going for a double backflip. That was interesting. Yeah, that was a good, it was would have been a perfect start to this routine. But again, you got to understand, he's on borrowed property, and that makes a big difference. That's the Jukish family up there uh, waiting for the Jukish brothers to come up, Gabe and Nolan. And he's actually going to bring that boat in. Oh, oh he was going to bring it in. He's not. He's just locking it. <laughs> Kyle yeah, Krieger yeah. doing the let me lock yeah. my feet in dance. <laughs> we call that the, what, the super, what super chicken dance, right? I don't think I call that the super <laughs> chicken dance, but we should. Uh, it's called I am on a borrowed boat and these footholds are too small for me dance is what that is. <laughs> Let's see. I think he's going to try to pull it off. Oh, I'm sure. He's going to go. There's a 360 at the start on that routine, but again, he is on a borrowed boat. Now, part of the problem, guys, is that all of these boats are custom made for each one of the riders. So uh, Kyle Krieger is uh, working Lee Stone's boat. So he's on Lee Stone's footstone, and all of that's custom. Like, they build these boats custom. Kyle's like, I am just having a heck of a time today and lost his goggles as well. The 
Kyle really does uh, need some points. He's in ninth overall. He's only 20 years old, so he's got quite a bit of competition left. Let's see if he can uh, pull off that. It would be nice to see that double back backflip. Yeah, I think um, let him just get a little bit comfortable on this. He just literally grabbed this boat off of the thing. You know, oh, my oh, Lord, he, he almost tried, had he, it. I thought he tried again. Just came up a tiny bit short on that. Nevertheless, an amazing um, attempt at a double. You know, oh, just two years ago, we'd never even seen a double backflip. Yeah. Now you can expect to see them. A lot of Not only, riders are doing it, right? Yeah, a lot of riders are taking on this trick. It is high, really, really tough, high degree of difficulty. I mean, but if you can pull it off perfectly, that's going to help your points uh, you know, a oh, whole lot. Oh, absolutely, and he needed them. He was back in... Um, He's back a little bit in points right now. Jack is in uh, ninth place. Unfortunately, that did not help him, even though he had to uh, borrow the boat. All right, who's up next here? Uh, uh, up next on is it Jason our. Jason Wright? Yeah, it's going to be Jason Wright out of our 11 competitors. You know who's uh, what? What riders or what country is the, one of the best at freestyle I've seen so far? Who? I mean, other than the U.S., of course. I mean, I think Japan is pretty good at it. You know, Japan is insane. I'll tell you why. Uh, Taji Yamamoto is one of the reasons for that. He is just incredible. But that entire Bun freestyle team—they're innovative. Uh, they're amazingly fun on the water. And what has been a I think even more fun to watch is the fact that they are great showmen. They really love to uh, do big shows and big showmanship. So, yeah, Jam Japan has been a I mean, major Japan, factor. I think I remember one time when they were doing the freestyle uh, over in Thailand. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, he pulled off, I think, over 15 backflips in a row. Yep. That's something incredible. I mean, people love that stuff. Yeah. The uh, multiple tricks in a combination in a series that also we talked about that degree of difficulty that also is a definitely amps up the degree of difficulty all right jason wright is uh the gentleman that is up next and jason's out of covina california he's 26 years old he loves golf and drag racing as well <laughs> and he said sarah <laughs> Dislikes heel blocks. He works at Rancho Cucamongo Fire Department. So you got a fireman out on the water. Right, and uh, this boat was built by TC Freeride and tuned by Hero. And, and he loves uh, race number 23. He's got all the sauce on race number 23. He's a national champ and a world finals champion. And by the way, his favorite music is country, hip hop, your favorite music, <laughs> and reggae. Well, that's a combination. <laughs> he is a, kind of a crazy. Speaking of combinations, his combination of music is interesting. All right, let's see, right? He's making his uh, wake, making his own wake, huh? Yeah, so what they'll do is, particularly on the opening combination, they want to try to make their own wake. And uh, when they do that, that allows them especially on flat water freestyle, they need a wake to work off of. It allows them to get much more amplitude and velocity on these tricks. So hence, you create your own wake to get started. He, that was a big 50-50. Oh, that was a nice air there for them. Yeah, beautiful 50-50 executed by uh, Jason Wright. All right, and uh, Jason setting up, <laughs> going around the SBT buoy. Uh, that's interesting. He's going to do a oh. big barrel roll over the <laughs> SPT. And then a, a looks like a six-pack of backflips oh. here. This is nice. This is Three, nice. 360 here we go. double backflip, one-hander oh, landers right. on both of them. <laughs> it's going right. after the SPT buoy. Brave man. Uh, you see those uh, that kind of weird-looking thing on the handlebar? Yes. I was uh, going to ask is, you about that. Were you? Okay. So um, that is uh, actually um, 
bars to help them lock in for super flip. They're called super flip bars, but they have to actually lock their wrist in on that, and you'll see why, because if they do a super flip, uh, their feet are completely off of the boat for the flip. So it, it's pretty insane to watch if you do super flips. So. Well, let's see if he's going to use it. Since he's, you know. Yeah, you'll see it because he has to stop and lock those in. Good height on the backflip. Now, that is a deduction when you stop like that. That is going to count against him. The idea here is to keep the entertainment and the routine flowing all the way through. Well, you are watching us live here at Lake Hawazoo, Arizona. Huge uh, hood grab on that one. Barrel roll. Man, it's interesting oh, nice. how he did a one-hand backflip in the middle of that combination. Reverse, going back with the backflips the other way. Oh, he's still going. Nicely done. Yeah. Big combination uh, for I mean, from what I've seen, Jay so Wright. far, so good, huh? Yeah, Jason's looking very nice. Yeah, in the WGP1 World Series yeah. right here. And you could hear the horn, right? That 15 yep, seconds 15 and then seconds. the final horn just letting him know, hey, you be done. It was sort of the thanks for playing horn. <laughs> Well, we know he Not meant sure to do that. what that was. Yeah, we, we know was he meant to do crowd. that. Yeah. That was gratuitous. And uh, again, we've still got uh, quite a few riders coming. Mount Shed, Niels Vellums will be up next. Niels riding for uh, Belgium. Jason Wright just completed, and Niels Vellums from Belgium will be your next rider out. Now, Niels Vellums, he was actually on our version of um, Survivor. <laughs> Uh, him and his mom were actually uh, doing that. It was a really cool uh, TV show competition that they were doing, like Fear Factor type show. They just got through doing that not terribly long ago. Niels Vellums is sponsored by Fieres Products, Richter, RRP, Joby Watersports, and Milestone Training. And Niels Vellums actually was taught how to do the super flip by Mark Gomez. In fact, Mark Gomez flew out to Belgium to uh, help Niels work on that particular trick. This guy is an incredible competitor. Let's see uh, his starting move. Niels Williams. Well, pretty good uh, air he got there. Yeah. The point back 360. There's a ton of variations on these 360s. And that's a nice combination for Niels Vellum's rolling out and a very smooth combination for him. Nicely done, Don. Yeah, another 360 on the landing. Perfectly executed. Niels Vellum's uh, has been a part of freestyle shows as well over the past years. That's a little no-hander there. And Niels Vellums was first on the IJSV uh, European Tour in 2021. He's 25 years old, lives in Antwerp, Belgium. He works as a jet ski performer and a motorsport instructor. He also is crazy because he skydives, so he's got a, a one-footed backflip there. Does a quick 180 setup, one-hander on the backflip. Rides for Team No Fear Energy Drink. His first race was in 2011. Nice setup for Niels Vellens. 360 no-hander. That's a, oh, there we go. Now, if you lock down the handle pole like that, that indicates a super flip. So first thing you gotta do is lock down the handle pole and then he's gonna pick those super flip bars back and actually, if you look up close, you could see those super bars. And there is the super flip. 
or a super roll. He did actually a super roll or a no-footed barrel roll. You could call it either way. And then a backflip. 360 reverses to 360. And uh, just rotates that back and forth on the 360. And got to love that. Super flips are still up. The super flip bar is still locked. <laughs> Beautifully done. Um, that was a great round for Niels Fellums. Great that he was able to do all of those tricks so close. It is incredibly shallow right here, so that makes it even harder. He was a Belgian champion, Benelux champion. He's won on the amateur European uh, tour and won in Austria as well in 2012. That's a French hull uh, and a full carbon hull. It's the same hull as Roberto Mariani, actually, another uh, jet ski performer. So next up should be what, Brad Turnbloom? Yep, Brad Turnbloom will be up next. All right, Brad Turnbloom is sponsored by Turnbloom Real Estate. Well, if you're just joining us here, welcome to the WGP1 World Water Jet World Series, round number three right here in Lake Hauzu, Arizona. Our next leg, or the championship leg, round number four, will be going to Southeast Asia, to Pattaya City, Thailand. All right, Brad Turnbloom has made his way to the water. And Brad is a very tall guy. He's aboard a Richter boat. Now, you don't have to wear a helmet in uh, competition in freestyle, Nick, but a lot of the riders have chosen to do that. Uh, quite a few of them will actually take the uh, top part of that helmet off, the visor, visor yeah. so that it doesn't slam them when they go into the water. But uh, Brad Turnbloom wants to ride with that full helmet on. Oh, look at that. He has a good That's super good flip error, to yeah. start. So the super flip bars are critical uh, to do that full super flip, but you have to take a downtime moment to lock them in because you have to flip them up, but they get in the way if you're trying to do the rest of the routine. Little gear clip, back flip, and a barrel roll. Uh, that looks like a Madonna or flex flip. No, I like that. That's right, a big that's, flex that's, flip. Yeah, when you grab your foot like that. Then yeah, that's pretty. That was pretty. That's called a big extended flex flip. Watching Brad Turnbloom on the water. This is going to be our well, last five. I think he's going to need some combinations to get a better points. He needs a lot more combinations. I mean, yeah, each, I mean from, from, my, from my perspective, each and every move that he just did looks good. Yeah, that was but a... I think uh, you need to put it together, right? A little faster transition. Yeah, yeah that was behind the back uh, scarecrow that you saw for Brad Turnbloom. And Mark Sickerling, I am amazed that you have not chimed in. You've got to come talk to me, buddy. Uh, that looked like a Madonna flip. Uh, watching Brad Turnbloom. And Brad came into this in seventh. Another Madonna flip for Brad Turnbloom, gentleman that comes into this in seventh place. Oh, 15 seconds left. Yeah, you good ears, bud. All right, now he's got to get jiggy with it. Another Madonna flip. Now, Madonna flip, you could see they push the leg in, um, and it looks like a dance move. Okay. You know, in the uh, freestyle category, it doesn't matter if it's pro or amateur or whatever, I haven't seen the, what do they call it, the dolphin in a while? The dolphin? Yeah. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not sure familiar with that one. I'll ask about it, but. Uh, I mean, you know you know how the crab just, you know, when they come down, they go underwater? Oh, super subs. That's a sub. That? Yeah, it's a sub, oh, and then um, uh, a corkscrew is when they, well, so they'll do a sub, and then they corkscrew, which is the Scott Wat the old trick that Scott Watkins used to do. And that's actually a corkscrew yep. where they, they have the tail of the water in and then they spin the boat around. It's very old school, yeah. super fun. And then they have a fountain. 
So if they super sub and then they have the fountain coming out, that fountain is the jet wash yeah, coming yeah, out the yeah. back. That used to be really, really popular as a trick as well. I, well, I haven't seen those in a while. Well, they're old school. Um, they're doing a lot more aerial tricks, aerial maneuvers. But, yeah, yeah well, that's very old school. That's yeah, they're trying to get more technical, get more points, and those don't get a whole lot of points. Again, you're watching Freestyle, Pro Freestyle, and we're on to our next competitor. Uh, Gabe Jukish is going to be up next. Is it Gabe, Gabe next? Jukish, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Gabe is 17 years old. And him and his we brother. Can, uh, I think we should be able to finish the, the freestyle. I hope so. I really yeah. want to have the opportunity to see Mark. I really uh, want to see, see Mark, Mark Gomez. Uh, All right, so uh, Gabe Jukish. Loves riding freestyle on calm, warm nights. Uh, they live, uh, both him and his brother, Nolan, live in Minnesota. He's 17, works with his dad doing dock and lift installation and removals. And they, he does a lot of side work, too. But these guys are some of the two most professional gentlemen, Nolan and Gabe. They take such good care of each other. If one of the boat breaks... Uh, if Gabe's boat break, Nolan just loans him the boat. They just really do take care of each other, and it's great to watch both of them compete. And you're going to hear the crowd go wild as uh, Gabe Jukic makes his way to the water. Gabe's a two-time amateur freestyle champ. He got third in pro freestyle in 2021, and right now he wants a win. And the worst way you're watching Gabe Jukic, sponsored by Lee Stone Products, Hydro Turf, Easy Ski, Hitch Haulers, Jet Pilot, Fresh and Salty, Beach Carts, and Jet Maniac. You can see the whole Jukish clan yep. up there. All right, let's see what kind of combination we're going to see here. Yeah, he's going to go big. Uh, he didn't like that. So they do their, again, their own setup wake. So the green flag doesn't start until he executes. So the, the time, first, uh, yeah, yeah the first. time won't start until he executes his first trick. Just stalking a good setup out here. You're watching Gabe Jukish. First race was in Wisconsin, but his first real competition was Havasu in 2018, and he won junior freestyle. Oh. Double backflip, and he well, I'm sorry. It. Yep. That's going to give him some points. Did you see how fast, fast. he went into that? you got to wick it up. You get that double before you come back down to your landing zone. It's got to be fast. Scarecrow oh, 360 nice. and a uh, tail grab backflip. Another 50-50 with a heel grab. Yeah, he definitely went a lot higher on that. We call it amplitude and velocity, right? Velocity is that transition. Amplitude is air, getting a lot of air. No hander on the 360. Nice on two backflips, three no hander barrel roll, reverses the 360. Nice routine for Gabe Jukish. This is going to get him a lot of points. And you can see the Jukish clan up there. Look how big this family is. <laughs> well, you got to support. You got to support your fam. Yeah, 50 50. If you can't support your fam, who you could support, right? That's right. And his pre-race routine, he tries to think of it as a practice ride, tries not to overthink, and doesn't have a specific routine in mind when he goes. Wow. I like really that. Really traveling on that uh, 360 and then the backflips. He looked like he was throwing from some cannon a while ago. Yeah, big air. One-hander backflip. And another 50-50. Barrel roll, 360 backflip, one footer. 15. And 15 seconds left to go. That was really a good combo. I have a feeling he's going to do another double. Time is Just for show. Out. You think? Yeah. I think he's going to do another double. Look at Big that air. Big travel 360. Yeah, the traveling makes a bigger, higher difficulty. What? 
Uh, and oh, another 50 not do 50 one. and a great combination as his time runs out. And you can see the crowd and his family going nuts on that. You were watching Gabe Jukish. This is just for Look fun. At that. And you could see how the energy just completely shifted on the water. He was already <laughs> having a good time, but now he's ecstatic because he just put together a the great it's routine. It's almost a perfect routine. All right, we've got uh, still three more competitors coming at you. Taji Yamamoto, Nolan Jukish, and Mark Gomez. These are your top-rated riders. So we got, what, three more riders? You got three more. Taji is in third right now. He'll oh. be up next in Nolan, who's currently in second, and Mark Gomez, who's in the lead in points. So Taji Yamamoto overall in third, right? So uh -huh. let's see how well he'll do here. He needs to let it all out for this final moto or final run. Yeah, and it's interesting when you take a look at the points on the board. He's actually tied with Nolan Jukic, both of them with a 16.5 on total points, and Mark Gomez with a 17. So these top three are really close in points. If Ty, I mean, if, if Taiji doesn't pull off a double, I think it's going to be pretty hard to get the points away from Turkish. I, I'm just not even going to I'm not even yeah. going to put my hand in the ring on that because, bet I mean, because I'm looking at it, I they're mean, close. That was a very impressive run. Gabe Jukish was yes. off the chain. Yeah. yeah but Taji is uh, in his own level. I mean, let me Let's just see. share. Taji Yamamoto Let's see what he's going to pull out of his hat here. Yeah. Taji is something else. He rides for Bun Freestyle. I mean, he's seen what the... Gabe, Gabe did, so let's see if he can oh, you know, top on that. Well, you talked about the rider that did all of the backflips in Thailand. Yeah. You're looking at him. That's right. Taji Yamamoto, um, he also did a double backflip in Thailand last year. See right, what see he's what he got. <laughs> you yeah. like in sync again. I'm waiting for a good setup. Uh. Just pulled out of that. He didn't like it. Yeah, I'd be willing to bet Taji Yamamoto will have one, if not two, doubles. Yeah. He's very good at doubles. And that boat built by Bun Freestyle. And it's going to be awesome. Five. Almost a 540. And there's the double. Yes, he did. Now, 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 now. Now, here's what's great about that. He didn't do the double. He did another trick and put the double after it, increasing the difficulty on the double. I didn't fully land it. Um, it's probably a tiny deduction on it, but nevertheless, great opener. Well, I want to see if he's going to make us count. And I just saw the super flip uh, bars what come I, up. Yeah, what I mean by making us count is when you, if he does the back flip over and over again, I tend to like that count. Yeah, he's got right. the super flip bars up, so let's see. Yep. Oh. Heel kicker. Oh. A Taji back That's flip. three already. Heel oh. clickers, back yeah. flip. That was awesome, and he did a twofer on that one, and then he's going to lock those back in. Taji Yamamoto, no, your 2021 freestyle triple crown winner on the water right now. If I was to judge. Uh-oh. It's going to be hard. For, it's going to be very hard to call. Yeah, that was a big flex flip for Taji. Two 360s and another back flip. Now, he did the uh, super flip bars a minute ago for the heel clickers. Now he's going to uh, lock those super flip bars up again. Oh, and he needs to go big here. Yeah. Time's running out. Now, you do those so that you can get your feet free of the boat. So expect a trick now with uh, the feet out of the boat. That's why we have the super bar, super flip bar, so it can hold their wrist in. It's a very technical position and a high degree of danger and difficulty for these guys. 360 oh, does a 180 didn't uh, didn't like the setup so he hesitated did not uh, make the choice to take his feet out oh, come on tight let's see let's go let's buddy. see what he's up to right time's running out big 540 and there was the second backflip oh man i don't think he get out there Gabe on that one, Don. Uh, we'll have to see on the points, but that was your run for Taji Yamamoto, sponsored by Bun Freestyle.
And uh, Taji, you got a third at the King's Cup in 2017, a second in King's Cup in 2018, and won the Freestyle Triple Crown in 2021. So just a legend in the freestyle world, and right now locked in I his mean, routine. On that routine, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still telling you that Gabe Jerkish, uh, that was a little slightly better than uh, Taj. Let's see, next guy is what, Nolan? You can see it getting a, a little bit more crowded down there. That's because we got our last two riders. Nolan Jukish coming into this. He was tied with Taji Yamamoto, and he saw Taji with a little stall out. So I've got to imagine that Nolan Jukish is going to unleash the beast because he's in a tie right now for a second. And, of course, now you got to just hang it out. And look at his whole family up there. He's got the cameras and the phones up, and... They are going to go crazy All up right, in the stands. All right, here we go. I hear the engine roaring. So you can see that uh, Nolan a little bit younger. You know, usually the young ones, they, uh, they're pretty aggressive. Flexible. Let's say flexible. Right. They're very flexible very, yeah. at any when they're this young. Look at that. Big Not wasting any time at all whatsoever. And a double backflip. Oh, look at no that. No stabbed it. Still got it. Big 540 followed by a double backflip. That is a huge degree of difficulty. Family goes wild. Now he no stabbed it slightly, but it still was a ride out. Big 540 again and oh, another no, backflip. And he landed another. and then went into a single backflip. That is huge. Well, you know what? I got a little excited. Oh, Sorry. yes, you did. But it's okay. It's okay. I got excited. I just didn't say anything. That was a big combination yeah, for Nolan. Nice. Another big 540 and another double. Wow, this guy is off the chain. All right, Nolan Jukish, a.k.a. the jumping bean. This guy is going insane out on the water. That is how many double backflips? Three already? Three. And maybe that's why the, the name came from, right? Jumping Bean. Well, I, I made that up. I don't know oh, that's his nickname yet. Oh, okay. Well, you just gave it to him. I did. Jumping Bean. The Jumping Bean. The Jukish Jumping Bean. Another 540 and a flared out. I just noticed something about One legged backflip. When he does, uh, he has a little bit of air, the hang time. Yeah, this notice. is big hang time. It's a yeah. nice lag on the top of that. Uh, that also fun. And a higher degree of difficulty, but a lot of fun to watch. I hope Mark Sickerlean is enjoying the show. One hander, uh, one hander, 180, and a one hander a barrel roll, and a one hander backflip, and lands it. That's a one hander lander. That is the reason why he's overall in second position. <laughs> Just insane. Nicely done. And Madonna, big Madonna flip. Just so impressed with this guy. <laughs> Mark Sickerling says, we enjoy. Mark Sickerling on the live feed, a multiple world champion for us. And look at this combination that Nolan oh, Jukish is rolling Nolan, out for us. You can see why he is second place overall. Massive extensions and big hang oh, time. Oh, yeah, we like it. Landed it with no hands. Beautifully done. Nolan Jukish did not mess around. Wow. 
Well, I'm gonna have to give it to him on that one, Nolan. Yeah, I, wasn't that I gotta awesome? give it to him. Yep. They competed the I routine mean, for. That's, uh, high, that's that's high stakes for me on that one. That one was Nolan Jukish came into this in second place, and he, as I mentioned, just unleashed the beast on Lake Havasu. The jumping bean Jukish, sponsored by HydroTurf, Jet Maniac, Jet Pilot, and Chris Bush. And up next, Mark Gomez, who took second last year in pro freestyle, and he is currently in the lead in points. If I remember correctly, Don, Mark Gomez has been over to Thailand before in he the has. freestyle. Yes, and has done quite well over there. And he's got a, a big menu of tricks, and he's famous for the ninja cork roll. Uh, which you are going to see today. Definitely, you gotta have, you, he's got to pull it off today. He also does a really cool thing called Indian Air. Um, so quite a few. That's going to be our last rider of today and your points leader, Mark Gomez. Let's talk about his sponsors, Black Rifle Co uh, Coffee, Richter, RRP, Hydrator, Jet Pilot, Bomber Eyewear, Queen Racing, TC Free Ride. As you can tell, he has a ton of sponsors. Ton of sponsors yes. Works, Ninja, Dasa, Torrent Pumps, Performance Fiberglass. Wait, let me get a breath. Rise and Wild, Factory Zero, Hot Products, Belanca, Homes, and uh, Russell just shooting. There you go. I got all it. Right, I well, got them all, I think. All overall, right. in first, first position is Mark Gomez. Yep. Mike Final Gomez. run. Let's see if he can hold his lead here. Now here's a great... Uh, backstory on this gentleman he loved to race close course as well but freestyle is his first love and we should be seeing a double backflip and he lands it beautifully lands it goes into a 540 backflip that was a scarecrow actually for uh mark and there's super flips but, uh, so he's going to do a super flip, a side profile, or an India air flip going away from the beach. Let's see which one of these he pulls out. But uh, expect Mark Gomez to go huge on that. I'm hoping for Indian air. And there it is. That was the ninja cork roll. It's like a sushi roll, but it's a ninja cork Nicely roll for done. Mark Gomez. Still has the... Uh, Super flips and another super roll. So a super flip, but a 540. It was actually a 180 to a Superman 540 slip is what you just saw from Mark Gomez. And there's a full oh, that's a nice super one. flip. And that's how the super flip should look. Full extension, the legs straight out and together. That's what Mark Gomez is known for is these precision tricks. Um, and it's all those little details. The feet need to be together and fully extended. Straight, yep. yep, that's a full super, full super flip. Uh, that was a big flex flip. No hand, 540. That's gorgeous. And you can tell he's really loving this. Scarecrow back flip, one foot on. Mark's got to be feeling good. This routine was flawless up until this point. Well, I'm... I'm Oh, wow, that's oh, a it's nice a look move. back. Yes. Yeah, he actually just did a look back. Nicely done. And I love how he does that cool look back. We've got 15 seconds left here. Yeah, look for a rock and roll. This is named after, there it was, oh, a rock and roll nice. named after Rock Florin and Chick. And a 360 into a no-hander barrel roll. And that was uh, in honor of Rock Florinanchik, uh, in honor of the 2012 World Finals Road. And he calls that the rock and roll because uh, Rock and his, uh, and his brother used to come out here and compete all the time, and they're just the nicest people. All right, Don, that should be our last rider, right? Yeah, this last is going to be it for the uh, freestyle, and we'll get you the points in the overall in just a minute. Another Ninja Cork. All right, uh, Don, well, we're going to get a chance to, uh, we'll give you an update later on of who uh, will be the champion for the freestyle. Yes, sir. All right. All right. But right now, we're going to take a break, all right, from our live feed. And, of course, we will be back around 1.30. Okay. For more competition. What do we have here later on, Don? Uh, we, we got a whole bunch of races coming up here in the second half of the competition? Well, we got 27 races. We're on race number 11, so what you can look forward to, Pro-Am runabout, 
Pro Ski GP, Pro Runabout GP, Women's Runabout, and Junior Ski. All of that coming at you later this afternoon. We'll see you at 1.30. That's right. We'll tell, see you soon. WGP1 Water Jet World Series Season 2023 is coming. Round 1, May at Mekalinki, Poland. Round 2, July at Vichy, France. Round 3, October at Lake Havasu City, USA. And final round, December at Patia City, Thailand. Supported by Sports Authority of Thailand, National Sports Development Fund, Amazing Thailand. Jet Tribe. SBT is really your one-stop shop for all things personal watercraft. As someone with a small fleet of stand-up jet skis, I love that SBT has all the parts that I could possibly need to keep them running so that I can keep doing what I love. Jet Tribe. 